then they're they're writing full sentences. Everybody has a bitch, blah blah blah, whatever. <laughs> uh, I cut myself <laughs> lately. I understand. I mean, that's, uh, that's like a whole nother tirade right there. <laughs> absolutely, I'm like, this is abusive. <laughs> it's totally uh, abusive, and it's gotten worse. Yeah. And uh, ever since it, ever since we had new um, new ownership, I find, but that could just be it. Mm-hmm. I'm always looking for patterns, and to me, that was just maybe a who knows. I don't know. Well, I think the first right. aren't that smart, and they just kind of, oh, let's do that, and then everybody does that because they got an idea from somebody, you know, mm-hmm. and then they just all do the same thing. Hi, this is Brian. Can you hear me? Brian. Hi. Hi. Is this Brian too? Yeah, yeah. Hi, welcome. We're, you're eagerly, Hi. you're eagerly being anticipated. How, uh, how many people do you have on the call? Let's see. 284. <laughs> hey, you may count. <laughs> Give or take a few hundred. <laughs> you guys are bigger counting. That's right. <laughs> Times are operative. That comes to about 10,580. <laughs> That's 40-ish. I don't know. I lose count. So 40-ish. Yeah. So. Okay, well, I'll- I'll wait. Hopefully, people more people will come before I explain that I'm not a neuroscientist. Uh, that, okay. I obtained, that I obtained all this information through research uh, on, online and in the libraries of Europe and the states. So, uh, I want to make that point uh, before we begin. Um, okay. I have no. Brian, formal where are you living? Where are you living? Are you still in Nicaragua? No, I'm in Asia now. I'm in Thailand, but I've got to get out of here. They're hammering my ears. Last three oh. nights, they just hammered my ears. So, uh-huh. um, uh, but anyway, I just were woke you up, in Hong so. Kong for a while. Were you in Hong Kong for a while? Yeah, like yeah, I was in Hong Kong. Yeah. How was the targeting there? Yeah, uh, I got hit. I got hit. You know, and there's a got hit pretty good. Um, and uh, there was stalking. Um. You know they have they have to get you at the airport as your as your, they have to get you at they have to get you at the airport as you're entering the country each time for the purposes of their surveillance for the purpose of verification of their technology so it's very very important as you enter a country's borders or you enter a different city within that country that they're ahead of you for the purposes of verification now it's all bullshit they're you know they're they're hiding behind law enforcement agencies. They're hiding behind, you know, other government agencies and individuals uh, in the, you know, public and private sector. But, you know, they have to predict your choices in advance. And in order to do that, in order to verify their technology, they have to predict your choices. Um, and they simply, they simply can't do that without – there's no way – if they can't do that, then there's no way for them to verify their technology – and if they can't verify the technology, then mind control fails from the very outset. Um, without without the process of verification, there could be no mind control. Um, and so, for years, can you hear me? Yeah. 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 And they know so when the years, plane is. They know when the plane is going to land. You know, they they have people. Well, obviously, right. they're on the plane. I mean, yeah, they're 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 using what's called the float box. They're using what's called a floating box to prevent the mind control victim from defeating the technology. So very important. I mean, organized stalking is used for various reasons, for surveillance, to provoke the victim into emotional responses, which can be remotely measured and integrated back into RNM data. Um, just so many different reasons they use uh, mind control to discredit the victim. Um, Etc. But one of the one of the reasons that organized stalking is absolutely crucial is for the process of verification. Uh, they just woke me up. With a, I was in an, I was knocked out, and they just woke woke me up just minutes before I was supposed to get on this call. So they wanted me on this call. Um, so what they do on these on these calls, if the if the government perpetrators, uh, the organized stalkers, etc., if they cannot stalk you, if they cannot provoke you tangibly, then they will do so electronically. 
When I say tangibly, I mean physically in person. Because they absolutely must provoke the victim at regular intervals throughout the day, or their or their process the, the process must start over, um, and they don't want to do that. I don't want to situation... because I don't want to. I don't want you to get interrupted. I'm going to mute the room, and then I'll unmute you, and I'll let you have the floor if you're ready to do that. Are you recording? Um. Yes, I'm recording. Yes. Okay. All right. Hold on one second. Before we get muted, could you just explain what is the value of the talk show calls to them? Well, the value of the talk show calls. Hi, the value of the talk show calls is very important. They listen. The government cannot control the internet. They they control the, the mainstream media, and by controlling the mainstream media, information can be more easily controlled and manipulated. Um, but they cannot control the Internet because it is too decentralized. So what they do is they flood the Internet with all this misinformation and disinformation and misdirection tactics in order to drown out the truth, to force people back you know, away from those sources uh, on the Internet so that they can no longer rely on those, on those websites, on those sources, on those forums as truth. And so they're forced back into the mainstream media where you know, information can be more easily manipulated. Again, they're trying to drown out the truth, and they're using three methods on the Internet to do that. They're using disinformation, which is lies. They're using misinformation, which is half-truths. And they're using a tactic called misdirection, which is a diversion tactic designed to distract the listener or the, you know, uh, whoever's viewing the content. So they want to prevent a credible discussion of the issues on these calls. They want to discredit the people on these calls. And it's not just in, in, in these talk show forums. The forums are heavily manipulated by the, by the intelligence agencies. They're heavily manipulated. Um, but it's, it's everything. It's every, you know, uh, there was, uh, I saw, for example, a video of a Los Angeles TI meeting where the first person that got up began to channel in front of everyone, knowing she was being, you know, psychologically channeling, she said, you know, knowing she was being recorded. Well, she just, did, she just, by getting up there and going first, she just discredited the entire community. Everybody that would get up after her was discredited. So, you know, they do it for various reasons. Um, but one of the most important reasons is conversational scenarios. Street theater is comprised of two things. It's comprised of situational scenarios and conversational scenarios. Well, situational scenarios uh, are, you know, that's, that's, they, they use these very effectively in organized gang stalking. But when you're getting on these forums and you're getting on the telephone and, and, and such, they have to switch tactics. So they use what are called conversational scenarios. And those conversational scenarios are used for various reasons, including the, to use trigger stimuli. Um, trigger words, um, et cetera, to map out and engage the effectiveness of their neuroprogramming, to prevent a credible discussion of the issues, to discredit the community as a whole. The reasons go on and on, okay? But that's what they're doing on these calls. Uh, and it's much easier to spot disinformation than it is misinformation. It's much easier to spot a lie than it is a half-truth. And these tactics of misdirection, remember three things, disinformation, misinformation, but it is misdirection that is most diabolical, okay, because they use misdirection heavily. Uh, let me give you an example of misdirection. Misdirection is, what they do is they block. In, in law school, they taught us these tactics. And one of the tactics that they use, for example, the d debate teams will use, is called blocking. And blocking is just a term to describe the constant interruption of the speaker, okay? Because if you could constantly rip and tear at someone at the fabric of their conversation, of their argument, well, eventually, it doesn't, you don't have to destroy the entire fabric of a person's argument in order to destroy that argument or the point they're trying to make. 
All you need to do is just rip and tear in a few places, and eventually that argument or the point they're trying to make will begin to fall apart on its own. It's called blocking. Well, it's more diabolical than that. What they're attempting to do is to prevent the listening audience from being able to process what they hear back into short-term memory. Meaning, if you can't process what you hear back into short-term memory, then you can't remember it. You can't understand what you're listening to. You hear it, you know, it, you know, it makes sense to you, but you can't, you can't remember it. You can't apply it because you don't understand it because you're not able to process that information back into short-term memory. That's called blocking. So what they're doing is, is can you hear me still? I need to check and see if people yes. can hear me you're still. Fine. Okay. You're fine. You're fine. Just so, so these conversational scenarios include the tactic called not just misdirection and, and disinformation and misinformation, but the tactic called blocking. You just heard it a second ago where some guy got on and started cursing. That's called yeah. blocking. He's not going to stop the speaker from getting his point across. If the speaker has enough time, he's going to get his point across. What they're doing is they're injecting, they're blocking to, to prevent the listening audience from being able to process what they hear back into short-term memory. You see, all of this, remember, there's, you're, you're tied to a supercomputer, elect, you know, remotely tied to a supercomputer for life, and that by way of a continuous stream of energy, that electromagnetic uh, low-frequency waves, uh, that stream of energy contains a hidden carrier frequency, and that hidden carrier frequency is specifically tuned to your unique brainwave signature. So what's happening is that supercomputer is monitoring all electromagnetic activity of your brain for life until the day of your death, until the day of your untimely death, okay? So by engaging in these conversational scenarios on the phone, they're able to accomplish what they want, meaning they're able to provoke the victim into, into synaptic responses, into um, electromagnetic emissions, into responses to... Is this the active and the adaptive signature? Or is this the conscious? Is this? He said some really interesting things about conscious computers that surpass even quantum computers. Is that what you're discussing? The conscious computers are the is the artificial intelligence that you're discussing right now? We're way beyond artificial intelligence. Okay, we're way beyond that. Artificial intelligence is the is the AI scheme that you see on the market today, and the AI, the artificial intelligence on the market today is based primarily on what are known as if and then scenarios. If and then. Okay, it's really better better explained as if and then algorithms. If and then mathematical formulas. If this happens, then that. If that happens, then this. Okay, but all that's based on math. Okay, but a long, long time ago, a couple of decades ago, the, the, the Department of Defense, DARPA, realized that no matter how sophisticated the technology gets in the future, artificial intelligence won't work because no, ma no matter how many billion or trillion algorithms you create, it's still not going to cover – the math still won't cover every scenario okay, because people are too different. They're too unique in their social and cultural and cognitive makeup. So they had to abandon the math, and they had to move to a different type of artificial – it's not artificial intelligence, okay, but uh, to, to explain it, I'll call it that. They had to move to a different artificial intelligence scheme based not on, on the math, based not on these if and then algorithms, but based on a reverse engineering of the human mind. Okay, so that's what's happening. You're no longer, we're no longer dealing with artificial intelligence. We're dealing with artificial life. And I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna get, it's gonna get real complicated real quick. Okay, but I'll explain as simply as I can. These are remote neural networks. Uh, and when I say remote neural networks, I mean they're automated, active, and adaptive to the victim. Yeah, this is how these are, these are these, it's correct to call them supercomputers, but it's really not correct at the same time because these, are, these, these computers, these conscious computers, we call them conscious because they have a, they have a will, intellect, and emotion of their own. Okay, so now where did they get that? We can say they're nano. Do you want to say nanotechnology, quantum computer? Would that be a better? No, but it's adaptive no, no. and it's creative, right? It's almost creative, this computer, the way it adapts. Well, well, it, it does create 
Um, well, let's back up for a second. Okay, first of all, the nanotechnology is, is, is just part of the – no, this is not nanotechnology. They're using nanotechnology. The stream of energy interfaces with the nanotechnology in your, in your brain. Remember, they get, you know, they get you to ingest the nanotechnology uh, in your food, in your water supply, breathe it, or breathe it in, et cetera. Once the nanotechnology is to draw this information because there's such huge amounts of data, and the only way to hold it and process that information wouldn't that be a nanochip, or is there something even? Um, well, let, let me. I'm trying to explain. It. Just I'll, I'll try. I'll try to explain as best I can. But but I'm really, really. I'm. You need to talk to Duncan about this because he's, he's far more. Uh, you know, he's far more versed in, in this technology, obviously, than I am. But nanotechnology. It, it, these nano chips, they're not chips, okay? These are nano particulates, okay? They're m almost microscopic, okay? Um, the nanotechnology adheres, it, it migrates to, once it's in your body, it migrates to the brain. And the nanotechnology adheres to the neurotransmitters in your brain, okay? You have millions of neurons in your brain. They communicate with each other across what is called a synaptic gap. The neurotransmitter is there at the synaptic gap. And so what they're doing is they're doing what's called whole brain emulation. They're building a cognitive model of your brain. It takes time. It takes a long time to do that. It's called whole brain emulation. They're breaking your brain down to the synaptic level. How? By provoking you constantly into physical and psychological trauma. They're using physical and psychological trauma to map out the sensory and neural pathways of your brain and central nervous system. That's neuroscience. Listen, what is neuroscience? Neuroscience, in its simplest definition, is the study of the brain and central nervous system. Well, they have weaponized neuroscience. Neuroscience is no longer just the field of medicine. Neuroscience has crossed the threshold of medical science. It is now a chief weapons platform of all the intelligence, the, 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 the main intelligence agencies of the world. When I say, you know, the main intelligence agencies, I'm talking about the CIA and the FSB, which is formerly known as the KGB, GHSQ and, 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 and you know, Great Britain, the Europeans, the, I guess, the many, okay? The point is, nanotechnology is how they achieve that, interfacing with streams of electromagnetic energy. So what happens is the nanotechnology uh, interfaces with it, with the stream of energy, or I should say the stream of energy interfaces with the nanotechnology. And that's how they're able to speak to and decode the neurotransmitters in your brain, okay? But that takes time. Before they can do that, they have to build a cognitive model. That's what all this trauma is about. That's what all the organized stalking is about. That's what all the torture is about, okay, et cetera. It's all about them using trauma to map out the sensory and neural pathways of your brain and central nervous system. If you wanted to break down everything they're doing to you, the reason why it's happening, into one sentence, that's what you would say. You would say they're using physical trauma. They're using physical and psychological trauma by way of situational scenarios and conversational scenarios, you know, provoking you into emotional provoking you into emotional responses regularly throughout the day, okay, so they can map out your brain. Does that tie so into the next one, I, I just want to ask a quick question to interject because I know people ask me this and I want to be able to answer, have you answer questions that we are all curious about. The waking us up in the middle of the night every couple of hours, I know that plays into the mapping, and maybe you can explain that better since you're already on that discussion about the trauma all day or the trauma um, we okay. Discussing. Okay. Yeah. All right. Listen. The reason that they use it's not just sleep deprivation. Okay. They also use something called the altering of sleep patterns. And what they'll do is they'll force you and you know they'll alter your sleep pattern. And by altering your sleep pattern, they're actually altering your circadian rhythm. And by doing so, by forcing you to sleep during the day instead of you know at night like normal people, they're able to further isolate you to keep you from engaging in external activities that interfere with their neural programming. Now, I'm saying neural programming. Uh, listen, listen when, uh, they need to minimize all external interference. 
okay? And when you engage in, you know, when you engage in these outdoor activities or whatever external activities you you do each day, you know, as you carry on, you know, your, your daily affairs, all of those those chaotic and random events and occurrences that happen in a, in a person's normal life, that interferes with their neuroprogramming. It breaks brain entrainment, if only temporarily, but it's something that disrupts the technology. They need to try to stop that, and they must minimize all external interference. And one way that they do that is through sleep deprivation and the altering of sleep patterns. Sleep deprivation is used. It's very brutal. It's, used, it's so effective it's used against prisoners of war. And it's used for a variety of reasons. For example, they want to reinforce the neuroprogramming. So they use, they use what they, they, they break up your sleep, uh, uh, your, the pattern of your sleep, they'll, they'll, they'll break it into cycles, short cycles. And what they're doing by waking you up and, and then letting you go back to sleep and then waking you up and, and knocking you back into a forced induced sleep, uh, what they're doing is they're reinforcing the neuroprogramming. Okay, that's how they do it. Listen. Listen, anything that, anything that lowers a person's energy level and vitality makes that person more susceptible to mind control technology, okay? Because what happens is when a person is sleep de deprived, okay, for example, what happens is the brain, your, the fatigue, the exhaustion, the, the drowsiness, et cetera, all of that is necessary because, because mind control technology works best at what is called theta state level. And theta state is where you're, you're super relaxed or, or drowsy. Or it could be sleep. Anything below four hertz, uh, four, four hertz or below theta, theta level, that's sleep, okay? But they want to keep you somewhere between four and seven hertz, which that's super relaxed state. And one way that they do that is, is through sleep deprivation. By, by using sleep deprivation on you, they, they, causing the fatigue and the exhaustion and the drowsiness all day, every day, that's placing your brain into a into a state into what what is called functional disorientation. It's a state of of, of mind, a state of, of being. They're placing your brain into functional disorientation. Now it could also be called procedural disorientation, but it's under it's easier to understand if you call it functional disorientation. Meaning meaning you're so they're drowsy. Not just, they're not just trying so to make us higher to make us miserable. They, you you can't be real they want to take you out of that productive, high-functioning state because it work, it, you work, their system works better when you're in a lower frequency um, in that more relaxed state. So that's why they do that. I, I didn't understand that because a lot of people I know have been extremely productive and high-functioning, and all of a sudden, you know, we're just tired and we're lethargic and we feel lazy. So that's, that. thank you for answering that. I was curious about that. I thought it was just to well, make us more I, I didn't finish uh, answering. I need to. I need to explain why they're doing it. Okay. Sleep deprivation. Sleep deprivation is used to place the victim's brain into a state of functional disorientation, where the victim is more. Where, where the system, the remote neural monitoring, remote neural manipulation supercomputer, is able to more easily trick the brain, to trick the brain into accepting the remote neural attack or impulse ejection, etc. So. So when you're tired, when you're exhausted, when you know you're suffering from fatigue, etc., all of this is called functional disorientation. Your brain is more easily tricked into accepting their remote neural attacks, and that's just one of the reasons. I mean, they use sleep deprivation for a variety of reasons, okay? Um, but mind control technology works best at theta state level, and sleep deprivation causes the person to remain at theta state level throughout the day, even when awake. Now, you know, again, it's, it breaks the will of the victim, it immobilizes the victim, it makes the victim easier to track, et cetera. There are many different reasons why they use sleep deprivation. But the number one reason is to keep the brain into, in a state of functional disorientation where the, the mind is more easily tricked into accepting the remote neural attacks and impulse injections. Where, because again, I'm going to say it again, anything that lowers a person's energy level and vitality makes that individual more susceptible to mind control programming. But understand there's a difference between nanotechnology uh, and, and, and microchips. They're not using chips, okay? That's 20th century technology. Uh, these nanoparticulates in your body, um, they, they're, they're, um, they're microscopic. I mean, they, they can literally pass through the smallest of the blood vessel. Um, and, you know, 
they put it in your food supply and your water chain. That's how they get it into your body, uh, your, 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 your water supply and your, the food that you eat. So once that technology is in your body, there's no getting it out, okay? So someone said, you know, a pastor said, you know, if, if a person can get to a person who's demon-possessed, if a man of God or a woman of God can get to them in time, that they can deliver them from that demon, they can exercise that demon out of them. Well, that's true if they know Jesus. But there, once, you, once this technology is in your body, there's no exercising it out. It's there until you're dead. Okay? So, um, literally, that's what's happening. You've heard of demon possession. Well, this is artificial possession. Your brain, there, there are multiple people in your brain right now. They're, they're, the hive mind teams are composed of multiple people who have a, 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 an expertise in the area of the mind. And they're literally inside your mind right now listening. And it's not just one person. It's a team. Okay, you've got, you've got multiple people involved listening in. Now, that's called the clone. That's called the firewall, etc. These hive mind teams are dedicated to you every eight hours with some degree of overlap. It's about every eight hours, and then they go home because they have families. They have careers. They have mortgages. They have lives, okay? And then, and then you know, every, every, the new ship will come on, and they'll pass the, the mind control victim off to the, to the new hive mind team. Okay, well, one of the ways that they're doing, that they're manipulating your brain is, and, and building a cognitive model in your brain is through, is through nanotechnology interfacing with the stream of energy. And all of it, all of it is based off the brain-to-computer interface. And that's the supercomputer. That's the conscious computer. Hello? I was just getting my phone unmuted. Well, thank you for answering that question. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about the hive mind? Because a lot of people aren't familiar with it. Can you tell some of the um, – yeah, I'd like to hear a little bit more about it. Okay. All right. Okay. The hive mind team is – all right, there are, there are, Dr. Robert Duncan and other scientists say there are four organizations behind this all. The Department of Defense, my former employer, the DOD, provides all the money. They provide the funding, okay? Uh, it's the NSA that provides the top scientists, DARPA, for example. That's, all, that's NSA, okay? When you get down to it, it's two agencies that are involved in the torture. The other two are the CIA and the DIA, the Central Intelligence Agency and the Defense Intelligence Agency. And those are the hive mind teams, okay? Now, the NSA will, you know, inject, uh, bring in the scientists at regular intervals to monitor all this and, and, you know, to correlate the research, et cetera. But the actual hive mind teams are composed of CIA and DIA, contractors. These are contractors. These are people, listen, back in the 1970s when, when the CIA got caught with MKUltra, they learned their lesson the hard way, okay? They're not going to use people that are, you know, directly employed by them, you know, where if they're caught, it can be traced back to them. They're using private companies. They're using contractors. These people are contractors. And when I say contractors, I mean they're scientists. They're psychologists. They're, you know, uh, psychiatrists. They're neuroscientists. They're like Duncan. They're behavioral scientists, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, these are the people that make up the hive mind teams. CIA and DIA contractors, people who have highly educated people, intellectual, I call them intellectual barbarians, okay, that's what they are. But they're highly educated people who have a degree of expertise in the area of the mind, particularly as it relates to memory and thought process, okay? So, so these, these hive mind teams, well, one of the one of the the head, the head of the hive mind team, one of the one of the people that's involved in it is called the clone, and I got some of this information from Dr. Robert Duncan's books. But the the clone is called the clone because he clones his brainwave signature to your brainwave signature. That's how synthetic telepathy works. That's how the hive mind teams communicate with each other. They don't communicate with their mouths if they don't have to. Okay, they communicate by by thinking out loud. They think out loud, and the other members of the team can hear them think. That's called synthetic telepathy. Okay. Again, the same technology in your in your body is the same technology in their body. Okay. 
So there are two interfaces that are being used against you. Okay, there's the brain to computer interface. That's a supercomputer. That's the conscious computer, okay? That's monitoring all electro electromagnetic activity of your brain for life. Um, it's called it's a, it's a process called transcranial transcranial brain stimulation, okay? The pilot of the F-35 stealth fighter, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't he does not control the plane manually if he doesn't have to. He controls the plane and all the weapon systems of that plane with his brain waves. Okay, these, uh, these, that's called transcranial brain stimulation. Well, that's the same thing they're using on you, a far more sophisticated form of transcranial brain stimulation. So what the clone of the hive mind team will do, the neuroscientist, the psychiatrist, etc., what he will do is he will use an electronic device and he'll be able to sync, to sync his brainwave signature to your brainwave signature. Because everybody on Earth has a, has a different brainwave signature. Nobody on Earth has the same brainwave signature. It's unique to you alone. It's like a set of fingerprints. Nobody else on Earth has your same set of fingerprints. Well, nobody else on Earth has your same brainwave signature. Okay? That's how that, – that's uh, – I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, but that's, that's how, how come you're, you, know, you absorb the energy and feel its effects when other people don't. Um, a stream of energy – just passes through and around are the people that they're targeting you with, and, and they're unaware. They don't know what's going on, but you absorb the energy and feel its effects. Well, because the reason you do is because you that stream of energy is specifically tuned to your brainwave signature, okay? So what the clone will do is he'll align his brainwave signature to your brainwave signature, allowing him effectively to clone his thoughts, his emotions, his you know, physical sensations to you right, by, by targeting your cerebral cortex. And when I say cerebral cortex, I'm talking about the different, the different regions, the different areas of the brain, the visual cortex, the audio cortex, the motor cortex, the sensory cortex, et cetera. Okay? They're targeting your cerebral cortex with this technology. All right? So people need to understand right away, you know, there's the firewall that this is another person who's a, who's a professional uh, they're part of the hive mind team, uh, but they're not sitting in some room all the time. You know, they're they're out and about. They're all they're moving in and around you. They're in a van or a car, uh, or you know, they're you know in your classroom. They're, they're pretending to be a student, or they're you know working, you know, in the office with you. They're the new employee that just got hired. They're the new neighbor that just moved in down the street. You know, they're the new uh, member at your church. Etc. Okay, they're they're moving in and around you at all times. Okay, and then they're using organized stalkers to constantly provoke you into emotional responses, which the supercomputer can measure at speed of light. And so it's downloading all of those responses every time you respond. It creates energy, electromagnetic energy in your brain. Well, they're mapping those emissions, those electromagnetic emissions, to build a cognitive model. And that's the, the hive mind team, team's job. Okay to map out your brain. Every eight hours, there, there's a new hive mind team. So these hive mind teams are composed of people who are you know, highly educated. They're, 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 but they're, they're not you know, hiding in some underground base somewhere. They're hiding in plain sight, in plain sight. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I just muted myself. Okay, so they're hiding in plain sight. And when I say, when I, what I mean is, they're the doctor at the hospital. They're the psychiatrist at the mental hospital. They're the psychologist at the children's clinic. They're the scientist at the, you know, at the institution. They're the, you know, the neuroscientist at the, at the university, the professor at the university, et cetera. These people have jobs. They have families. They have careers. They have mortgages. They have lives. They're, they're real people, and they're hiding in plain sight. They're just part of what's of a horrible, you know, paradigm, the greatest travesty, civil rights travesty in American history. They're they're just part of that, and nobody knows the horror that they're really involved in. Okay, but these 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 are the hive mind team. These are the people that are that comprise the hive mind teams. Okay, and they're using what's called the second interface, which is called the electronic brain to brain interface. They're not using the brain-to-computer interface. They're using what's called a neurochip. 
It's a brain, to, uh, an electronic brain to brain interface. Okay, so it allows the clone to, to clone his brainwave signature to your brainwave signature so that he can read your mind, hear, you, hear when you think, see out of your eyes and hear out of your ears and feel what you feel, et cetera, after they you know, built a cognitive model of your brain. Okay, so, so this, this hive mind team is dedicated to you every single day of your life. And as you move around from, you know, region to region, you know, country to country, city to city, et cetera, the hive mind team will change, and you'll get new members. And because it's not just about research and development. It's about training research and development, okay? That's what all this is about, you know? Uh, the, all this, you know, this technology you're seeing come on the market, the, the, the moving of prosthetic limbs, arms and legs by, by use of brain waves, uh, the, the driving of a car. Google has a car now that you drive with your brain waves. So does Tesla. A Toyota has a car you start with your brain waves. Mattel has a children's game that the child will move a metal ball around a table with his brain waves. All that's available right now on the market. It's called art, it's artificial intelligence. It's, you know, it's, it's older technology, but all of that was derived from the training, research, and development of, of mind control victims, okay? That's, that's where they're getting all this, 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 this um, that's where they're getting all the R&D from, okay? So it's, you know, it, it's, this has been going on for quite a while. This started back in the 1960s, you know, with Jose Delgado and Jacobson and the other, the other neuroscientists. The CIA hired those people. And you know, at that time it was still public, but later on, within a few years after that, it went private, it went black, and then we don't, they don't we only know that it existed because they were caught, you know, MK Ultra, et cetera. Um, so the, the the those people are are constantly moving around you on a regular basis. So as soon as you're targeted with this technology, okay, they they all the sub all the apartments around you. All the homes are subleased. They move in, and the training, research, and development begins. Okay, so they're going to keep people surrounding you at all times for various reasons, including to keep you from defeating their technology. Okay, and there are ways to defeat the technology. They need to stop that. Okay, um, but also for surveillance. Without physical surveillance, they can't see if their technology is working properly. So physical surveillance is very, very important for, for them to be able to, to map out your brain. Well, here's a question for you. In real science, you know, in the formal model of science, there's a beginning, middle, and end to a project. But in these cases, we're hearing people under torturous conditions for 10, 20, 30 years at a time until the rest of your life, that's not real science to me. That's like a torture program that has no boundaries. Well, there's an end. Uh, there's, you know, there's a beginning and an end to the, to the, to the, to the scientific. Listen, you know, uh, most of this is long-term research. Um, but, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, when you die, the program ends for you in a way, okay? When you're incapacitated, people don't want to hear this. They don't want to talk about this um, because it's not pleasant. It's important to discuss, though, okay? Um, yes, this is long-term research, and, and a lot of the people that are, are targeted are targeted, you know, for a long time. Others are not targeted for a long time because everything depends upon the, upon the you know, the program that you're placed into, okay? So understand, I mean, this is... Um, yes, this is long-term research and development for, for, for a lot of people, but it may not be for you. It depends on, you know, what – listen, there are, hundreds, there are hundreds of different programs in MKUltra. And if there are hundreds of different programs in MKUltra, then there were probably thousands of projects which, which fell under those programs. And then the mind control victims would fall into one of those projects. So, um, so you, you know, this, this, it, it depends on which program they placed you into. Monarch victims – Trauma-based mind control victims are generally long-term research, training, research, and development. Uh, but others are chosen for various reasons, you know, uh, to, for example, uh, to learn how – this is a weapon system, okay? Mind control technology is a weapon system. 
So in order to perfect the technology, and in order to learn how to destroy people, they, you know, they, you know, it, again, and I want to talk about this, you know, they want, they want, they want a, a happy ending. Well, I, I like happy endings too, but I'm just going to be you know, real, realistic with you. Um, you know, trauma-based mind control victims are not allowed to walk away. You're just not. I mean, people that have been, who think they have been allowed to walk away have not walked away. They're only, they're only, they've only stopped the torture to see how they, to, to, for the training, research, and development, to see how they integrate back into society and deal with, the, with uh, you know, that level of trauma over a long period of time. They don't let trauma, now state-of-the-art mind control victims, for example, that's another program based on the ignorance of the victim. The victim has no idea they're targeted with this technology, that's state-of-the-art mind control. Uh, so they're allowed to walk away. Well, their lives were destroyed. Their health was destroyed, but they can walk away because they never they never knew the government was behind it to begin with. They never knew they were being used for you know scientific research and development. They you know they don't know anything, so they're allowed to walk away. Trauma based mind control victims are not allowed to walk away because they could become a loose cannon in the future. They could you know come back to testify against the CIA, DIA, etc. And they're just not going to allow that to happen. Okay, so it depends on which program you've been placed into. I can only speak to you with regard to state-of-the-art mind control and trauma-based mind control because those are the two, you know, two programs that I know that I was placed into. But there are hundreds of programs, okay, yeah, yeah. and the, you know, depend and the, you know, it will depend on which program you're placed into that will determine, you know, how how long and what it is they're trying to achieve. Because as soon as you're chosen for this technology, they build a profile of you. Long before you know you're ever placed into this into this program, you've been chosen. Your name has been placed on a list, okay? And then you know when it's time to move into uh, you know it's time to start a new phase. You know they they've achieved what they achieved whatever objectives they wanted with the last trauma-based mind control victim, and they killed him or her, or they incapacitated them, or they set them up and framed them and had them thrown into a prison or a mental institution. Or they mind hobbled them. They fried their brain, turned them into a vegetable, or something close to it. Okay, those are those are the scenarios that a, a lot of mind control victims are faced with. Okay, trauma based. Um, so you know when they decide that you know, they've accomplished whatever objectives they wish to accomplish, uh, and they you know they they basically have have uh, you know done away with the victim in one or, in one of those ways I just mentioned. And they move into a new program, new training and research. That's when your name is, is taken from that list and you're placed into the program. Well, as soon as that happens, they build a model. They build a profile of you, okay? And then based off of that profile, your habits, behaviors, likes and dislikes, uh, you know, your, your social circle, et cetera, um, they determine, you know, what program they want to place you into, by determining your lifestyle, by determining your, your habits, because they always do what is most difficult. And never, with a mind control victim, they always do what is most difficult, because for them it's about the research, it's about the data, okay? So they would not, for example, take a, a bisexual and turn him into a homosexual. It really doesn't further their research, you know? They do what's most difficult. So they would take a, they would take a heterosexual, for example, and turn, him or her into a homosexual, or they take, you know, a Christian and turn him into an atheist, or a Muslim and turn him into a Jew, or, um, you know, a, a peaceful person and turn him into a, a violent, you know, uh, serial killer, etc. I mean, that they always do what is most difficult. Okay, so understand, understand that you know, everything depends upon the program which you've been placed into. Um, and again, I can only speak to you about the Monarch program. Uh, and state-of-the-art mind control, because those are the only two that I have experience with. But there are a lot of people targeted for various reasons, and the vast majority, and we're talking millions of people here. This is not hundreds of thousands. Just in America alone, there are tens of millions of people that have been targeted over the years with this technology. And there are millions that are, that are targeted simultaneously every day, because these are this, the entire system is automated. It's run by supercomputers, and these supercomputers are capable of hundreds of thousands of calculations per second. Now, I said some of this back on, you know, uh, I spoke with Renata uh, on her call, and I talked about some of this. I didn't get to go in detail, um, but 
Now this is this 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 hyper game theory no touch torture paradigm is you know it's it, it's never ending it's never ending you know it goes on to the day of your death uh, or or incapacitation uh, whatever that may be uh, so they're they're every day they're gonna they're gonna initiate they're gonna engineer chaos and trauma in your life because they need to force you to respond trauma mind control trauma based mind control it's based on your responses. If you re if you don't respond to their specific stimuli, it doesn't matter that you respond to every chaotic and random event that occurs in your normal life. You know, uh, as you walk down the street, for example, or you know, as you as you, you go about your daily affairs, that doesn't help verify their technology one bit. You must respond to their specific stimuli. Okay, that's called street theater. That's called situational and conversational scenarios. So after they've built a profile of you. Okay, after they've determined, you know, uh, what you will respond to, they don't care whether it's good or evil as long as you respond, okay? It could be the Bible. It could be child pornography. They don't care as long as you respond, okay? So, so once they figure out what it is you'll respond to, then that's when they begin to engage in, in the street theater. And street theater, these conversational scenarios and situational scenarios, uh, Dr. Robert Duncan calls them scripts. That's probably a better term, but I, I use conversational and situational scenarios because it helps people understand. Okay, so the, so the, you know, they first they have to find out what it is you'll respond to, because mind control is based on their ability to capture your attention. If they cannot capture your attention, their technology fails. This entire mega billion dollar technology that that that's more sophisticated than the space program. All of it is dependent upon their ability to capture the attention of the mind control victim. Because every time they capture your attention, it produces synaptic responses in your brain. And remember, the supercomputer is measuring all that electromagnetic activity. So they're constantly trying to provoke you into a set of responses that this RNM system, this remote neural monitoring, remote neural manipulation system, can remotely measure by way of that stream of energy interfacing with the nanotechnology in your brain. Hey, um, hey um, Ella, I have a question that I think would help the new people who haven't heard Brian speak before, and that is explain hypergame theory and how that pertains to the research. Okay, uh, that's a, that's really good. I mean, uh, that's something I wanted to talk about in many in many uh, calls, but uh, you know, it's just such, such a vast area that you know you can't just talk about it in a few minutes. It really takes a, it really takes about a, a, a two hours to really to really do justice to the hyper game theory. But let's just let's, let's just make it simple, okay? Um, hyper game theory is simply game theory applied to decision tree modeling. Okay, think of a decision tree model with a, a tree with all its branches, and each one of those branches on that tree has, has a numerical value. And at the top of that tree, at the, at the tip of the tree, you have all the, the numerical values for each branch of that tree added together. That's the summation of the model. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to make it even simpler than this, but I'm just going to tell you real quick what it is. Hyper game theory, okay, is about this game theory applied to decision tree modeling, proving it's a mathematical formula that won Dr. John Nash the Nobel Prize in, in economics. I've been to, to, to Stockholm, Sweden, four times. I've been in the, the Nobel Museum. I, I went there to see that award, okay, that they gave him for the non-cooperative gaming theorem. This non-cooperative gaming theorem is, theorem is called the hyper-game theory, and it is the basis of all of their their attacks, listen, everything they're doing to you is based off deception and manipulation. It's a deadly game of deception and manipulation to force you to continually respond. The way that they do that, their tactics are based off this model, this mathematical model, okay, that, that ja John Nash created. It's called, it's called the hypergame theory. Well, what's game theory? The simplest form of the definition of game theory is that Game theory is is a game made up, uh, you know, that comprised of one, two or more people uh, based on uh, rational people, based on logical scenarios, moving in and out of that game to their own benefit, trying to respond to the to the moves of the uh, of the other person 
as best they can with the resources that they have available to them to place themselves into a position, of, you know, to better their own position against the opposing party. That's kind of a long definition of game theory, but that's the simple definition of game theory. It's, it's a game played between two or more rational people based on logical scenarios. Okay, well, hypergame theory is totally different. Okay, it's not a game based on, you know, logical scenarios played between rational people. It's a game which never ends. In game theory, if you use a chess game, for example, in, in game theory, you know, there's always some, in the real world, there's, resources are scarce, time and money and that, you know, and manpower, etc. All that's scarce. Everything, resources are always scarce. So the game, in, in game theory, eventually the game is going to come to an end. For example, when you play a game of chess, you only have so much time to play the game before you run out of chess pieces. Okay, before the game comes to an end. Okay, the, ob the objective of the game in chess is to force checkmate or stalemate. If you can't force checkmate, at least force stalemate. In other words, don't suffer a significant loss. Place the opposing party in a position where they can no longer better their position against you. That's called stalemate. Okay, that's the objective in game theory. But hyper game theory is totally different. Hyper game theory, the game never ends. It goes on forever until one of the two parties that are playing the game dies or becomes incapacitated, okay? Now, since the two people playing the game are you and a supercomputer, guess who's going to die or become incapacitated first? Not the supercomputer. It's you, okay? So, so deception and manipulation is how the game works. Okay? It's called the hyper game theory. And what they're doing is, the, re the reason it's called hyper instead of just game theory. The reason it's called hyper game theory is because the game never ends. It goes on forever until one of the two parties either dies or becomes incapacitated. So what, what, what's happening is, is that the, the supercomputer and the hive mind teams, both interfaces, the brain to computer interface, that's the supercomputer, and the electronic brain to brain interface, that's the hive mind team. Okay, they're engaging in hyper game theory tactics against you on a daily basis to constantly provoke you into an endless series of counter moves just trying to function and survive because each counter move is an evoked potential. Each counter move is an electromagnetic emission of your brain. So they want to constantly force you. Remember, it's all, mind control is about getting the victim to respond because each response is an electromagnetic emission of your brain. Each response, okay, it allows them to map out the the neural and sensory pathways of your brain and central nervous system. So they use the hypergame theory to do that, to force you into an endless series of responses each day, to force you into an endless series of counter moves, just trying to function and survive. How? By basing their next move off of your last move. By basing their next response off of your last response. So the game never ends, because there's always a higher optimum, meaning there's always a next move. The game goes on forever. You see? That's how they continually provoke you. So, for example, if they want to provoke you on your computer, you know, they will, again, decision, hyper game theory is about, uh, is about, uh, it's a mathematical model. It's about, you know, it, basically it's a, it's a formula, okay? It, proving that you, know, by, by altering, by, by continually and perpetually altering any value in the model, one can continually and perpetually alter the expected outcome. So that's what they're doing. They're just continually and perpetually provoking you. So you may get online and start trying to send an email. Well, they'll, they'll disrupt the email. Okay, so what they want you to do is keep trying to send. They want you to keep trying to fight back. They want you to keep trying to function and survive. So they'll, they'll disrupt the email by, 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 you know, disabling the network. Then they'll allow the network to come back on then they'll disable the network again, over and over and over. That's called the hyper game theory. Or they'll erase, they'll erase images or videos or files off of your computer. And then as soon as you, you, know, you respond that they've done that, then they'll put them back on your computer. And then as soon as you respond to that, they'll take them back off your computer and put them back on and take them off and put them back on and take them off. Or, you know, as you're going to work every day, they'll create these scenarios, this chaos and trauma based on the hyper game theory to force you into an endless series of counter moves, an endless series of responses each day. Okay, that's why it's called the hyper game theory. The game never ends. Unlike game theory, 
which eventually comes to an end. So think of a chess game. If you want to, if you want to try and picture hyper game theory in, in, in your mind, and you know, think of a, a chess game that never ends. Okay, that where the pieces, you know, when they're captured, they're not removed from the from the board. They're, they don't die. Okay, they just go back to their starting point where they began the game, and the game goes on forever. That's hyper game theory. And in, in, in game theory, a chess game will come to an end because you run out of pieces. They're captured. But in game theory, the, the pieces just go back to their starting point, and the game goes on forever. That's hyper game theory. That's by that's perpetually basing their next move off your last move to force you well, to respond. Well, actually, yeah, actually, in a hyper game theory, there are uh, numerous possibilities of off of your reaction. So it's not just one counter move, but probable counter moves that are calculated by algorithms. And then after that, like, they decide they want to limit you and hold you hostage so they can limit your moves. That way they can bring you back to an end zone. But if you were out and about like a normal person, you'd have more probable choices to increase your chances of, you know, having a good day or whatever. And uh, they would have to calculate a lot more probabilities. And also the analogy for chess is very good. Um, the difference is that, in the chess game, you have limited number of pieces as well as a limited number of moves for each piece. Whereas in hyper game theory, you have an open space where the checkerboard goes all over the planet, and any move can take any number of steps. Well, I mean, there, yeah, there, there are different. There, I guess there are different ways to explain it. I, I mean, yeah. you know, there again, it's a, it's a, it's a big area, okay? But it's, right. it's, it's actually a it, it, Game theory is based on mathematics. Remember, I told you that hyper game theory is a mathematical model. It's a mathematical formula. Okay, well, the, so that's what game theory is. Okay, it's just a, it's just a branch of math, of math. Okay, that's what it is. It's about dealing with, you know, that's why it's called the non-cooperative gaming theorem. It's about dealing with cooperative or competitive situations in your life. They're going to force you into on a daily basis. And based on your choice of action, whatever it is you choose to do, however you choose to respond, there's always a next move. There's always a next response. So they're going to try to keep you responding. So, for example, let's, let's, let's use an example that the targeted individuals will face with the hyper game theory. And it is so crucial that you understand this. If there's, one, if there's two things that I, could, I wish that I could get targeted individuals, mind control victims, to understand, it's a basic understanding of the technology, and we'll talk about that shortly, and two is the hyper game theory. If you can understand those two things, you can you can often defeat their technology, um, but you can certainly um, place them into a position where they can no longer better their position against you. And that's the that's the goal of game theory. Okay. So first, understand that their move depends on your move. If you don't move, if you don't respond, they can't move. They can't respond. They can't continually provoke you. Okay. So let's just use a scenario, for example, that you might that might happen. To explain this, okay, you, you get up, you got to go to work, okay? You, you walk outside, and you got a flat tire. They just vandalize your property. They just and, and remember this this process here is endless, okay? It, it it goes on forever and can be triggered at will by the attackers. But I'm just using a you know, scenario to try to help you understand. So you realize you got to get to work. You got a flat tire. You're not going to be driving. So you call a taxi, okay? The hyper game theory begins. You've just responded. They needed you to respond to the flat tire. You just did. The, the game begins. So the taxi takes a long time getting there. Actually, the taxi's right around the corner. You know, he's 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 all part. He's part of the game. Okay. So as soon as you call the taxi, the taxi will uh, will, will take its time in getting there. And so that's again provoking you. Okay. So so eventually, you know, you're late for work. The taxi arrives after he's driven by your house about five or ten times to provoke you, you know, each time. Okay, eventually you get in the cab and you give the cab driver the directions. But the cab driver can't seem to get the directions right. So he keeps repeating them to you, trying to to engage you, provoke you with conversational scenarios. Again, that's that's a that's a response. That's them that's them provoking you into a response. So the the cab driver can't get the directions right. He keeps he keeps missing the you know the street. And that happens five or ten times. Finally you become so frustrated you can't you know, each, each one of these provocations is an emotional response. It's an electromagnetic emission of your brain. 
Okay? So finally, you just get out of the cab and discuss, and you wait, you walk over to the bus stop. But they're already, they've already planned that out. That's the, the, the whole scenario has already been planned out in advance. So they've got gang stalkers. Remember, they're all over the place anyway. They've got gang stalkers at the bus stop waiting for you. Okay? So they're going to harass you as you at the bus stop. They're going to harass you on the bus trip. Then as you get to work late, your, your boss is going to harass you. See, all of this is part of the paradigm to constantly provoke you. So just in that one scenario, if you're just trying to go to work, just trying to survive, they were able to provoke you, th provoke you 30 or 40 times. Okay, that's the hyper game theory. Okay. So Brian, game can I ask you a quick question at this point? What happens if you keep your mind, this is hard to describe, neutral? You're not thinking positive, you're not reacting negative, but you, you know, it's hard to do. I mean, it's like sitting there blanking your brain out. If you keep neutral in your head, can they still play the game? I mean, okay, well, so you go outside, you have a flat tire, okay? You just keep your, your thinking, your consciousness neutral. You go, and, and, you know, I don't know, maybe, you, you know, I guess it went away when you have to think, I'm going to call a cab, you're out of the neutral zone. But do, do you know what I'm saying? Well, yeah, what you're talking about is quenching, okay? There's also other methods that's called redirection, multitasking, et cetera. What you're doing is quenching is, is, is maintaining situational awareness, not just situational awareness of your surroundings, but situational awareness of your thoughts, uh, okay? So that's, that's called reading active memory. Okay, you have, you know, there's, there, memory's a big area. You've got active memory, residual memory, et cetera. Let's just keep it real simple. You have long-term memory and short-term memory. This technology is designed to target your short-term memory. And short-term memory is anything long, shorter than 30 seconds. Anything longer than 30 seconds, that's long-term memory. So this technology is designed to, to attack you during thought composition as you're formulating your thoughts and preparing to act. Okay, that's when this technology is designed to attack. These are called thought-triggered attacks. Okay, but does it so what attack is it at the emotion, or does it attack at the thought? No, the, 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 the system, the remote neural monitoring system, the RNM supercomputer, is designed to lock on to your emotional state. Okay, so your emotional state, right? So if there is no emotion, there's no reading, right? Well. Yeah, yes and no. I mean, you can control if you if you can learn to read active memory, then you can begin to control your responses to their provocations. The problem is that you know you can you can ignore them, but the, the system is not going to just sit there. Okay, the system is probing the supercomputer is probing you for a response. You know, it injects it's waiting with a, with a with a remote neural attack, memory management, impulse injections, etc. It's waiting for you to respond. If so you it's refuse to it's getting worse until you finally break down. You, right, right. If you refuse to respond, it's going to inject again and again and again until you do respond. Okay. So, but yes, this is very important for people to understand. It's called quenching. Okay, it's maintaining situational awareness of your thoughts, not just your surroundings. Okay, and then learning to redirect, for example, back to your original, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever your working reference is, whatever makes you happy is something like it's called redirection. We'll, we'll talk about that shortly. Okay, but but everything must, everything depends on this on this mathematical formula for them to be for their technology to be effective. They need to constantly provoke you millions of neurons, okay, millions of uh, billions of neural pathways in your brain, uh, in your in your central nervous system. Okay, billions. Okay, so they got to map all that. The supercomputer is mapping all of that. Okay, in order to map all of that, they got to constantly provoke you every chance they get by inject by creating all this chaos in your life. Okay, but if you can manage your responses, okay, then you can begin to control what is called the verification process. And that's listen, listen. Verification without verification, I, I can't stress this enough. I don't want to get off the hyper game theory and into another, another area, but I'll just say this. Without verification, there is no mind control. You know, I, I used an example the other day about I mean, the government uh, using a particle beam cannon. And well, they've got serious technology now. They've blown a hole in, the, in one of the moons of Jupiter with, with, with a particle beam cannon. 
Well, they, you know, think of think of them targeting a, a moon in a galaxy ten light years from Earth with a particle beam cannon. Okay, well, they could fire that particle beam cannon all they want, a day and night, 24 hours a day, but they never know if they hit their target because they can't see that far. Hubble telescope and the other, and the other you know, imaging devices that they have, they can't see a, a moon in a galaxy 10 light years from Earth. So they could fire that particle beam cannon at that moon all they wanted, day and night, 24 hours a day, but they would never know if the technology was working properly or not, okay, because they can't see it. Well, the same with mind control. They need to be able to see you respond, physically surveillance, to, to be able to watch you respond to these. It's not just about the supercomputer mapping out the electromagnetic emissions of your brain. It's about them linking, linking descriptions to behavior. Okay? They need, they need to be able to link your responses to behavior okay? in order to, to, to determine what it is, what frequencies cause you what electromagnetic emissions in your brain, what electromagnetic brainwave patterns are responsible for which emotion or which sensation, et cetera. So the, all that requires constant surveillance and constant, it's, a, it's called a verification routine. They're constantly forcing you through what's called a verification routine each day to perfect their technology. But again, the, the way they do this is the hyper game theory. So they're constantly going to force you into an endless series of counter moves each day, okay? to get you to provoke you, to constantly to respond. So you'll have chaos just in the, you know, just, just trying to just to normally communicate with people or to normally, you know, move around uh, or just to normally function and survive. They're going to perpetually base their next move or response off your last move or response. All of that depends on their ability to first get you to respond. So the way you defeat hypergame theory, there are two ways really. Can you hear me? I can. Yes, we okay, hear the you. Way, okay, the way you defeat their, their hypergame theory tactics is, is first to refuse to play the game, to refuse to respond. And that does work, I mean, to some extent. The problem is that if you, don't, if you, if you try to ignore them, they're going to force you to respond. They're going to get violent with you. They're going to put their hands on you. Okay? They're going to force you to respond. Okay? That's why they're constantly getting in your face. That's why they're constantly asking you for directions. They'll, they'll come up with the most mundane questions imaginable. They'll come up and ask you the time, for directions, you know, for money. You know, uh, they want to keep you constantly talking to them. They want to keep. They want to constantly engage you in these situational and conversational scenarios. Okay, that's street theater. Okay, why? To constantly force you into an endless series of, 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 of emotional responses. Okay. And the way they do that is the hyper game theory. So they're con going to constantly counter whatever it is you do. But the way the way that you defeat their the, 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 their tactics is it's just you just refuse to respond. Now that's not always possible. Okay. Now let me tell you something. You know, you, there there are going to be times where you're going to have to respond or perish or die. Okay. Let me give you an example of what they did to me. They've been hiding behind law enforcement agencies for years. Okay, that's how they've been targeting me, with this bullshit lie about, you know, insurance fraud. I, I can't say exactly what it is. I can only speculate. But based off a pattern of what they've been doing, I think it has something to do with workers' compensation. But in any event, I, I figured out what they're doing. They're, they're basically manipulating my medical treatment for that purpose and trying to set me up. Okay, so, so one of the things they were doing was they were, they, were, they were constantly targeting me by hiding behind these law enforcement agents. Agencies, the police, Interpol, the FBI, et cetera. And one morning, you know, I was forced, I was homeless. I was forced into homelessness because of this. They got me fired from my job. I got kicked out of my apartment. And I was homeless on the street. Well, I was homeless in northern Kentucky and southern Ohio where it gets 20 degrees in the dead of winter. So I had a sleeping bag. I was sleeping under a bridge. Well, I was able to enter that bridge because the fence had been cut down. But hours later when I woke up, they had somebody come back and re-fence off the entire bridge. You see, I mean, that, those are the games that they play, okay? Constant provocations, constant hyper-game theory tactics. Well, I had one of two – I was either going to respond to this, to this move or perish. I had one of two choices, either freeze to death or get up and climb that fence. Okay, well, they're, remember, they're trying to force me, you know, to set me up for workers' compensation or insurance fraud or something. So they're filming everything. 
So I, they actually filmed me climbing this fence with my luggage, throwing the luggage over the fence first, and then climbing the fence. Okay, that's a provocation. So they're going to engage in the most trivial, paltry, fanciful, and fantastic tactics imaginable, not just to provoke you, but to discredit you, okay? Because, you know, in the more trivial, paltry, fanciful, and fantastic their tactics, then by default, the more trivial, paltry, fanciful, and fantastic your complaints that these trivial, paltry, fanciful, and fantastic tactics are happening. That's how, that's how they discredit you, but it's also how they provoke you. Okay, so sometimes you're going to have to respond or perish. It's just that simple. They're, they're not, they're, they're not going to just let you ignore them. The system is probing you for a response, and this endless game of deception and manipulation called the hypergame theory is the way that they do that by forcing you into an endless series of counter moves. Listen, they have to, they have to uh, verify their technology, and they use trigger stimuli to do that. And when I say trigger stimuli, I mean trigger words, trigger images, trigger objects, trigger colors, etc. okay, in order to verify if the neuroprogramming is effective. For example, you know, the night before, they'll use neuro-linguistic programming on you using words. Well, then the next day, they'll come up, and they'll engage in conversational scenarios around you using those words, the trigger words, to see if you respond, to see if the, 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 the neuro programming is effective or not, and how you respond to those trigger words. Well, those are called conversational scenarios, the same type, type of conversational scenarios they're using on these, on these phone calls, okay? So the, uh, the, the, the whole game, the hyper game theory, this no-touch, torture, terror paradigm, based on the mathematical model called the, the non-cooperative game theorem. It's all designed to constantly provoke you into to emotional, physical, and intellectual responses, which they can remotely measure and integrate back into RNM data. Okay? Hello? We're listening. We're listening. By, by, by how? By engaging in never-ending if-and-then scenarios by engineering continuous trauma and chaos in your life, okay? The trauma-based mind control cannot exist without extreme long-term trauma, not just physical trauma, psychological trauma. So they're mapping out every, the, the remote neural monitoring system, okay, the supercomputer, the hive mind team, okay? They're not just, they're not just in, you know, um, manip it's not just about remote neural manipulation. That's a big part of it. It's about remote neural monitoring, and there's a big difference between remote neural monitoring and remote neural manipulation. Okay, remote neural monitoring is where they, they capture your thoughts, where the system downloads at speed of light every thought that you have. Okay, energy travels at the speed of light. They're, you, they're literally, listen, the, the, the technology works like this. Somebody said they were being attacked with cell phones the other day. You're not being attacked with cell phones, Okay. They know how to listen. They know how to zap somebody with directed energy. Then they they've got that part down. Okay, this is about mind control. They want you to believe you're being attacked by cell phones to, to discredit you, to traumatize you, etc. Okay, that's not how the technology is designed to work. The technology is not designed. What? Please continue. Please continue. Okay. Okay. So, 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 what happens is here's how they they target you with the technology. Okay. This is a simple definition. It gets real complicated real fast. I'm just I'm just going to keep it simple. Okay. The supercomputer, I'm a, a computer multiplexer. Okay. It, it routes the signal to a tower, satellite, or mobile platform. Those are the three the three methods of targeting you: tower, satellite, or mobile platform. So once the computer multiplexer routes the signal to the tower, satellite, or mobile platform, the tower, satellite, or mobile platform then relays the signal to you, the digital receiver, similar to how cell phone technology works. The digital receiver is tracked and pinpointed in real time just like a cell phone, except with mind control technology. Remember, this technology is based on two things, timing and location. Okay, But with cell phone technology, it's a phone. But, but with mind control, it's not a phone. The digital receiver is not a phone. It's a brain. It's a human brain. Your brain has been digitalized by the nanotechnology, implants, etc., in your body, in your brain. Remember, the, ner the, the nanotechnology adhering to the neurotransmitters in your brain, and the, the, the nanotech then speaking to and decoding those neurotransmitters, interfacing with a stream of energy. 
Okay? So that stream of energy is what I'm referring to when I say signal, okay? Because in that stream of energy is what's called a hidden carrier frequency. That hidden carrier frequency is your brainwave signature, is your electromagnetic brainwave pattern, okay? So get this down pat. If you can get this down pat, you'll, have a, you'll begin to understand how the technology works. Computer multiplexer routes the signal to the tower satellite or mobile platform. The tower satellite or mobile platform then relays the signal to you, the digital receiver, okay? Now, why is that, why is that important? Because only the, only the mind control victim absorbs the energy or feels its effects because that, again, that stream of energy is specifically tuned to your brainwave signature. So they're literally able to dial into your cerebral cortex 24 hours a day. That's literally just like you would dial into someone's cell phone, okay, by dialing a specific number. The cell phone, when you dial, it, when you dial, your, when you dial somebody else's cell phone, okay, what happens is the cell phone sends an electromagnetic emission, a microwave emission to the, to the tower to the cell phone tower, and then the cell phone tower relays the signal to, their, to, to, the, to, their, to the person you're calling, to their digital receiver, to their cell phone. So same, same way with this technology. This is a simple definition, but this is how the technology works. Okay? So, so what happens is, you know, people think they're being attacked with cell phones. You're not being attacked with cell phones. If, uh, cell phones are used. I've watched them use it. I've watched the hive mind teams in action in Central America. Okay, I was able to interact with them a couple of times. The firewall broke down. Okay, it broke down for, for, for just a moment, but I was able to see the technology and how it worked. Okay, those are control switches. That's how they turn the technology on and off. Okay, um, they're not zapping you with cell phones. They know how to do that. Listen, they can get these devices. I said this before. They can get these devices down to the modular level. And when I say modular level, I mean I think they can even get a cyclotron down to the size of a cell phone now. But that's not how this technology is designed to work. They're not zapping you with cell phones. They want you to believe that. Okay, this is about mind control. It's not about targeting people with directed energy. They get on these calls like Dwight Mangum and Derek Robinson and these other government perpetrators. They get on these calls to, to, to confuse you, to get you to focus on the directed energy attacks. They, this is about mind control. This is not about zapping people with directed energy. Okay? I'm not saying that you shouldn't try and counter their, their technology, their, their attacks, but you need to understand that's called misdirection. They want you to focus on the attacks. This is about mind control. So understand right away that this, they're targeting you with three platforms, towers and satellites and mobile platforms. And when I say mobile platforms, that could be, you know, that's a very wide area, okay? That could be, you know, as small as a briefcase or as large as a truck, a van, a car, a ship, a boat. These are called mobile platforms, and basically what they are is repeaters. They're basically extenders, like, you know, when you want to extend Wi-Fi in your home or in your office, you use what's called a repeater. Well, these mobile platforms are simply repeaters that allow the, uh, the hive mind team to interface with your brain and the supercomputer at the same time by way of a continuous stream of energy. So, so that's how the technology works, three platforms. Tower, satellite, or mobile platform. And only you are going to absorb that energy. The others around you are not going to absorb the energy. You could be standing in a room full of 100 people, okay? The stream of energy is just going to pass right through them and around them, and they're going to be totally unaware because they don't absorb the energy because they don't possess the same brainwave signature that you do. That stream of energy is specifically tuned to your brainwave signature alone. That's why you're traumatized. That's why you feel the pain and they don't. We got we kind of got off the hyper game theory there to talk about you know uh, how how they attack you, but everything if you really want to talk about it and break it down to the simplest level, it's all about deception and manipulation. You now you can, this system this R and can you I need to understand I need to I need to hear people talk every now and then to to know that you can still hear me. We can hear you. Thank you so much. Your information and is very valuable. And I'm I'm one of the people that are triggered by cell phones, so that helped me a lot. Thank you. <laughs> okay, let's 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 talk about cell phones. Okay, listen. I take understand two what cell you said. I, I totally got it. Okay, okay. So take two cell phones and set them on a table next to each other. Okay, and then dial a number. Only one phone rings because only one phone possesses the specific resonance frequency for that number. Now the stream of energy is flowing through the other the phone, but the other phone didn't ring. Why? 
because okay. of a specific resonance frequency. Because okay. that stream of energy was targeted to a specific number, a specific frequency. So that's how people standing next to you in the same room don't absorb the energy when you do. Okay? Cell phones are basically digital receivers. Your brain is a digital receiver. Okay? That's basically what they've turned your brain into. So they're able, literally able to turn your brain into their very own visual, verbal, and auditive communication system. Okay? Again, it takes time. They have to build a cognitive model of your brain. But it's all a game. It's all a deadly game of deception and manipulation that constantly provoke you and confuse you. Because the system is constantly mapping out everything you're saying and doing, and those are evoked potentials. And the cell phone is brilliant because you can't go anywhere where there isn't a cell phone, hence I'm homebound because of being attacked while I was on a cell phone. It's brilliant. You can't get away from a cell phone. So this is great. I appreciate it. I'm glad to hear this. Ma'am, this technology has nothing to do with cell phones. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Well, I know that. Okay. But what I'm saying is they did such a good job while I was on a cell phone. I like I collapsed. I got burnt. I couldn't get up. I was beat red for an hour. Totally traumatized. Never got on another cell phone. And every time I go out, come on, you can't get out of being around cell phones. So every time somebody puts their hand in the pocket and pulls out a cell phone, that was right. so traumatizing that each right. time I see exactly. a cell phone, I'm traumatized. So right, with, exactly. That's the technology. Awesome. That's what it's totally called. It's called indirection. It's called indirection. Not misdirection. It's called indirection. Okay? If they're using, they'll walk up to you with their hands in their pockets, or they'll walk up to you and point a cell phone at you. And at the same time that happens, and the same time that happens, you'll have an, you'll, they'll attack you with directed energy to make you believe your neighbors are attacking you or your friends or your coworkers are attacking you with cell phones. It's not happening. Now, I'm not saying they can't zap you. I'm not saying they can't zap you with a, dev with a modular device. They can do that. But that's, that's not how the technology is designed to work, okay? So when I say when – but I want to say when I'm talking about deception and manipulation, what I'm saying is that this, this, this supercomputer – that's, that you're that you're remotely tied to for life. That's constantly monitoring all electromagnetic activity of your brain. Okay, it's designed to constantly confuse you, to constantly deceive you, to constantly force you, pitch you into a, some type of action or access sequence for the purpose of verifying their technology. So it's constantly interrogating you. Okay, deception and manipulation. Okay, so you can't, you can't accept anything that they say is true. When I say they, I mean the CIA, DIA, hive my teens, organized stalkers, etc. Okay, nothing. You can't accept anything they say is true, and you can't accept anything that the system interrogates you about as true because that's what's happening every day. This, this R&M system, this supercomputer, this conscious computer is constantly injecting at speed of light memory references. Listen, they're using your own memories against you. Mind control is based on three things. It's based on censorship, memory management, and direct behavioral control. Okay, there are two interfaces. There's the brain-to-computer interface. That's a supercomputer. And then there's the neurochip. There's the, it's called the electronic brain-to-brain -brain interface. That's the hive mind team. Those are the two interfaces. But the technology, if you really want to break it down, I mean, it's, it's, everything they're doing to you falls into those three categories, censorship, memory management, direct behavioral control. Well, censorship is their ability to restrict you at will, to restrict you from doing something, engaging in activities that interfere with their neuroprogramming, uh, from listening to music or from dancing or going out and having a, a good time or from reading a book or whatever, anything that it trains your brain away from their system. So they'll use trauma, they'll use pain, or they'll use remote neural attacks of dizziness, drowsiness, etc. All of these designed to disrupt your continuity of thought to erase short-term memory. That's what trauma-based mind control is about, okay? That's called depatterning the mind, okay? So they're going to disrupt your continuity of thought. Every time you start reading a book, you're going to have, you know, every 30, 45 seconds, you're going to just get really drowsy, and then you're going to snap back to alert status. A split-second bout of drowsiness, almost passing out drowsiness every 60 seconds. What they're doing is they're injecting with these remote neural attacks using theta waves, to use drowsiness to, to, to disrupt your continuity of thought at regular 60-second intervals 
to prevent the book or the or the television show or the movie or the music, etc., from entraining your brain away from their system. Okay, anything that, that creates a dominant external stimulus uh, 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 and trains the system. Listen, the, okay, the brain has a tendency to align itself with any dominant external stimulus. The brain aligning itself with a dominant external stimulus is called brain entrainment. Well, that's what the system is doing. It's, it's constant. Whether you, you don't understand it, you may not know it, but at the subliminal level, the system, the remote neural monitoring supercomputer, is actually having a conversation with your mind, constantly injecting uh, at regular intervals to keep your brain entrained to their system. When you do something, when you engage in some type of activity that, that interferes with that technology, that entrains your brain away from, that creates a dominant external stimulus, such as a listening to pleasing music, it shifts the focus of attention away from the supercomputer to the music or a movie or engaging in outdoor activities or dancing and singing in the shower, writing a letter, etc. All of these activities, these external activities, break brain entrainment. They're, they create a dominant external stimulus. Okay, So censorship is their ability to stop that, to minimize all external interference. And they'll use trauma, they'll use pain, they'll use drowsiness and dizziness, et cetera, okay, to do that. That's called censorship, to restrict you at will. The second is memory management. Memory management is them using your own memories against you. It's, it's, I call this a fabricated and falsified stream of energy. Really, I didn't call it that. That's what another scientist said. I just picked up on what he said, okay? This fabricated and falsified stream of energy Basically, it, 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 I say it's fabricated and falsified because it, the stream of energy contains data, okay? When I say fabricated and falsified memories, well, there's a big difference between fabricated and falsified. Fabricated memories are your own memories that the supercomputer, the remote neural monitoring system, was able to, to copy, to download at speed of light, okay? So you thought of something, and, 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 and it captured that memory. Because the system, that's what the system is designed to do. It's designed to randomly capture bits of your senses, thoughts, your memories, etc., and then to, to, to fabricate stories based on whatever it captures with no other intention but to, to distract you, to torture you into submission to the system, system's influence. So it's constantly forcing your train of thought, your narrative of thought. Why? To keep your brain entrained to their supercomputer. So you're constantly forced to think about something over and over. Those are remote neural attacks. Those are memory management. They're using your own memories against you. So, for example, your memory of, uh, uh, of a childhood memory of swimming in the lake or your favorite football team, you're constantly thinking about this over and over. Those are, those, that's a pattern. Everything they do is based on patterns, okay, identifying and developing coherent patterns of thought. Okay, that's how they map your brain out. Okay, well, that's called memory management. They're using your own memories against you. Okay, so that's fabricated. Fabricated memories are your own memories. Falsified memories are memories that they plant inside your mind during neural programming. And these memories, these falsified memories can be so real that you'll swear it happened. Now, you'll come to believe, for example, you were molested, sexually molested as a child by your mother or your father. And people will, will, will walk up to you and say, that never happened. And you'll say, yes, it did. You, you believe that it did. That's a falsified memory that they planted into your system through sleep hypnosis, through neuro-linguistic programming, dream modulation, etc. All this is called memory management, okay? Fabricated and falsified memories. Memory management is one thing. Memory management is blocking your real memories and injecting them with falsified and fabricated memories. Because as soon as you think of something, it becomes a memory. Okay, just like a computer, you know. As soon as you think of something, it becomes short-term memory, and then, and then after 30 seconds, it becomes a long-term memory. Okay? So that's what memory management is about. It's about being able to deceive and manipulate you using your own memories, fabricated memories, which are your own, and falsified memories, which they planted into your mind during, uh, during your sleep, during, during the neural programming phase. Okay, and then the third category is direct behavioral control. And this is more complicated. It's you know basically, for example, direct behavioral control means they're be they're able to um, to manipulate your 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 daily motives and emotional perceptions to begin to get you to become dependent upon their system. Because once you become dependent upon their system, it's more easily for them to control you. Okay, that that that's very. They want you to become dependent upon what they're doing, 
And one of the ways that they do that is through what is called direct behavioral control. The manipulation, for example, of your, of your daily motives and emotional perceptions so that you begin to believe that their artificial impulse injections, their remote neural attacks, et cetera, are your own. When in fact, it's not your own, it's them. So those are the three areas, censorship, memory management, and direct behavioral control. That's, what every, that's everything they're doing to you. Is there any indication, how would you know? Because of course we're all wondering, like, how do we know if those memories are actually our original memories? There's gotta be an indicator, like someone, I could have sworn I read an article saying that, if it's an artificial, it kind of sticks out kind of by itself without the fluidity of the timeline. Does that make sense to you? Or is, there, is that along the right train of thought? Yeah, okay. Uh, very good. Okay. Okay, so, okay, so there's a way to tell uh, that, you know, whether or not, because there, there are your memories. There are memories that they captured. The remote neural monitoring system captures your memories. Every time you think of something, it captures it at the speed of light. And then what the supercomputer will do is it will inject that memory back into your subconscious at speed of light to make you think that it, you, know, you thought of it. Uh, but in fact, it is your memory. You know, but, but it's no longer just your memory because it was captured by the, by the supercomputer. So the supercomputer is injecting, for example, your childhood memory every, every, every 90 seconds. It's injecting the thought of the childhood memory back into your subconscious. Why? to deceive and manipulate you, to force you into some type of action or access sequence to verify whether or not their technology is working properly. For example, peanut butter. Say you really like peanut butter, okay? Well, you know, they captured that memory. They captured that electromagnetic emission, okay? So what now the supercomputer is doing is, is injecting the, the – now, they don't force you to do anything. They can. They can force you to do something. They can hypnotize you, et cetera. But that's not how the technology is, is designed to work. They give you the desire, okay? They give you the desire for peanut butter or sex or masturbation or, you know, uh, uh, God or uh, sports, whatever, whatever you will respond to, okay? That's, that's all that is important to them is that you respond. They don't care anything about peanut butter. What they care about is their technology, Okay, so the supercomputer will inject the memory reference, the, the previous memory reference of the peanut butter back into your, into your mind, your subconscious, at speed of light, at regular intervals, to keep you constantly thinking about the peanut butter. Why? They want you to get up and go to the cabinet and get the peanut butter to prove, to verify their technology, to prove their technology is working. Or they want you to get up and go to the grocery store and buy the peanut butter, in which case they're going to have people behind you as you drive to the grocery store, they're going to have people in front of you. They're going to have somebody standing at the grocery store entrance. And guess what? They're going to have somebody in the peanut butter aisle. Why? To verify their technology. And then when you get to the peanut butter aisle, guess what? Every single jar of peanut butter is going to be removed from the shelf. Why? Why remove all the peanut butter from Kroger? To verify their technology. Verification. So the way you determine whether or not the remote, these artificial memory attacks are your own, this is called memory management, okay, restricting, blocking your real memories and injecting with falsified and fabricated memories, okay, because remember, as soon as you think of it, it becomes a memory, short-term memory and then long-term memory. So the way you identify these, these memory attacks, whether they're your own original thoughts or whether they're artificial, is by looking for patterns. Everything they do, the, the, the CIA and DIA are doing, with mind control technology um, is based on patterns from, from mind control itself, which is decoding thought patterns, to organize, all the way to organized talking, which is based on choice reference patterns. Everything they're doing is based on their ability to identify and develop coherent patterns of thought, coherent patterns of behavior, et cetera. Remember, they're linking descriptions of your behavior with, with, with those electromagnetic emissions of your brain. So you look for patterns. If you begin to compulsively and obsessively begin to think of something over and over, well, that's not you. That's them, okay? The system is trying to interpret your thought, your memory and thought process. And in order to do that, in order to verify the technology, the system has to predict what you're going to do, what you're going to watch on TV, what you're going to eat, who you're going to call on the telephone, uh, you know, what you're going to say, uh, et cetera. The system, whether you realize it or not, this supercomputer, which is capable of hundreds of thousands of calculations per second, is predicting your choices every day at speed of light to verify the technology. It's called your reference choices. I call it 
choice reference patterns because that's what it is. Okay. Um, the impulse injections are different than than memory attacks. Impulse injections are based off memory attacks, but they're different. They're 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 if you want if you want a simple definition of impulse injections is that they're they're the desire. Remember, I said they don't give you. They're the emotion. They don't give you. They don't force you to do anything because that's that's not what the training, research, and development is about. They give you the desire. So you have a strong urge or desire, for example, for peanut butter or sex or whatever at higher levels. That's called a high frequency attack. And you have a low urge or motivation for for sex or peanut butter or whatever at at, at lower at baseline levels. That's a low frequency attack. So what they do is they start out at baseline levels at a low with a low frequency attack, and they keep injecting at regular intervals the desire for peanut butter or the desire for sex. Okay, they don't force you to do anything; they give you the desire. Okay, higher levels of high frequency attack, lower baseline levels of a low frequency attack. They start out at baseline levels and they'll inject the memory reference of the peanut butter or the previous sexual memory you have of, of someone you had sex with. Okay in order to manipulate you, in order to force you into an action or access sequence of lust or masturbation or peanut butter sandwich. Whatever it is they think you will respond to is what they will use. They don't care whether it's good or evil. Okay? So, you ignore it. Okay? Well, every 60 seconds, every 90 seconds, the system is probing you for a response. When you ignore it, the system injects again and again, each time, incrementally at higher levels. So you'll start out with a, you know, a low urge for peanut butter, and you'll say, well, I'm just not going to get up from the chair and go get the peanut butter because I don't feel like it. Well, the system's not going to allow that. It's not going to just sit there, okay? It's going to it's going to probe you to, to, to get up and go to the kitchen cabinet and pull out the peanut butter or take off your, your clothes and start masturbating or whatever it is they think you will respond to, okay, using lust, for example, or – Turn on the television and watch your favorite sports team. They don't care anything about your favorite sports team. They care about their technology. Okay, all of that is designed to pitch you into some type of action sequence. Okay, to, to determine that whether the technology is working properly. So you keep ignoring it, and, and, and the desire gets stronger and stronger. Those are called impulse injections. Now, an impulse injection by itself. It's just the desire. But when they inject over and over and you begin to see patterns of this, that's called impulse sequencing. They're basically sequencing the impulse injections with the memory attacks. Do you understand? Yes, I do. <laughs> okay. So the way, you, the way you identify whether or not the, the, the thoughts you're having are your own or, 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 or artificial injected by the supercomputer or the clone, okay, of the, of the hive mind team, is look for patterns. Let me give you an example. I, 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 uh, they've done this to me so many times. Um, I, I'm just going to give you an example. I wanted a watch really bad, okay, when I was targeted, when, before I realized you know, how the technology worked. I wanted this watch, and suddenly I just kept obsessing over this watch. I would get online. I would research it. I'd go down to the jewelry store and look at it. You know, I just I was always thinking about this watch, and it didn't make any sense. It's just not how I, I normally thought and behaved before I was targeted. You know, so you know I would sit, I would literally get on the on the super on the on the computer, and I would begin researching different places to buy the watch. I would I would begin researching. I'd be doing reviews on YouTube about the watch. I was obsessing and compulsively thinking about this watch over and over until I realized these are not my thoughts. The system is attempting to drive my behavior. The system wants me to, to research the watch on the internet. The, the supercomputer wants me to go down to the to the uh, to the store and look at the watch. And guess what? When when I get on that when I get down to that jewelry store, guess who's going to be there? One of their gang stalkers. Why? To verify the technology. So you look for patterns. If you begin to obsessively think of something and compulsively think of something. Unless you're OCD to begin with, that's not you. That's them. It's all about their ability to develop coherent patterns of thought. So they're going to force you into an abusive thought pattern at regular intervals. Okay? This abusive thought pattern is designed to drive your behavior, to, to manipulate, when I said earlier, direct behavioral control, to manipulate your, your daily motives. In this case, they, they wanted me to go get the watch. Okay? That, that's that's what I'm talking about. Look for patterns. If you begin to obsess over something, over you just you're just constantly thinking about it 
over and over. That's them, and that's the supercomputer injecting back into your mind, into your subconscious, your own previous memory references. Okay? Choice, reference, patterns. People want to know about organized stalking. If you really want to understand organized stalking, it's also based on choice, reference, patterns. Okay? A pattern of your previous choices. Well, what, is a, what, is a, what is your choice? It's a memory reference. Choice, reference, patterns are based off your previous memory references. So, you know, and so they're stalking you, strategically placing their organized stalkers based on your previous choice references. They're harassing you based on your previous choice references. Okay, for example, one, example, one, one lady gave me was she bought a red car for her daughter, and then suddenly they were just constantly harassing her with the color red. They would mob her with everybody would wear red shirts or they would, you know, uh, plant red flags in our yard, etc. Well, where did they get the color red? They got the color red from our previous choice reference of the of the red. They determined that red was her favorite color, and they, they they based on her previous choices, a pattern of her previous choices. That's called choice reference patterns. Well, it's not only your behavior, it's not only your activity, it's also your thoughts. Previous memory references are based on your previous choices, your choice reference patterns. So look for patterns, and you'll be able to identify their memory attacks, their artificial injections from your own original memory and thought process. That took a long time to explain, but that's what it is. Thank you. Thank you very much. I did have a question. It was a while back, though. When you were talking about the computer system and that it has um, – it has intelligence, um, it has emotions, and um, you said one other thing. Um, how, is that programmed? How is that? I mean, that just sounds unreal for me to understand and comprehend. Is there a simple answer to that? Yes. Okay. The supercomputer, this conscious computer, we're, we're way beyond quantum computing here, okay? The government is 80 years ahead of the technology that's available in the market. The Department of Defense, my former employer, is 80 years ahead of the technology you see on the market today. But they are hundreds of years. They are centuries ahead of the technology which is not available on the market. And one of the technologies they're using is called conscious computers. And these conscious computers are called conscious because they can perceive their environment. They can perceive other people's emotions. They can perceive how other people see them and view them. They're conscious, meaning they have a will, intellect, and emotion. This technology is designed to, to manipulate your will, intellect, and emotion. Listen, they know, how, they, know, they, they know how to manipulate the human body, the five senses with electromagnetic energy. The human body is an electromagnetic organism. Uh, it's also a vibratory organism. So the, uh, the human body vibrates at different frequencies. Each organ is, is uh, for example, your, your heart. It, it's an electromagnetic organ. Your brain, it's an electromagnetic organ. Your body, your skin, your, 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 the entire human anatomy is electromagnetic, but it's also vibratory, meaning it vibrates at a specific frequency of electromagnetic energy. So simply by modulating the phase, the frequency, and the amplitude of the stream of electromagnetic energy, they could target any region or organ of your human anatomy. Okay, they got all that down. They know how to do that. They can, they can manipulate, damage, and destroy the different regions and, and uh, different organs of the human anatomy with strings by modulation of the phase frequency and amplitude of the stream of energy. This, this, is, this is about mind control, and mind control is about your will, intellect, and emotion. Okay? What is your will, intellect, and emotion? It's your human soul. It's, it's your personality. The body is made up of three things, body, soul, and spirit. The body is, just keep it real simple, the body is the five senses, taste, touch, sight, hearing, smell. The soul is the will, intellect, and emotion. The spirit is the conscience, okay? Well, this technology is designed to reverse engineer your will, intellect, and emotion. Why? They're downloading all that. They have tens of millions of personalities already downloaded into their system. The location of, of, of these databases was given up by Dr. B.J. Skinner, Famed psychologist, he, he worked, for, uh, he was a professor at Harvard, okay? He gave up the location of where they're storing all this information. So how, where did then, do, where then did these conscious computers get the will, intellect, and emotion? They got it from people like you. People that, previous people whose personalities, whose will, intellect, and emotions have been reverse engineered, have been remotely mapped. 
and then integrated back into RNN data and stored back into the system. So the, the, the will and selected emotion that these supercomputers have is not really their own. It's the, it's the will and selected emotion of millions of people that have been copied, okay? These are these digital uh, bio-algorithms of love, hate, uh, joy, sadness, despair, anger, depression, etc. All of this mapped out with you know over the last 40, 50 years, um, millions of people. All of it stored in a database uh, based on digital bio algorithms. Well, that's what the super, that's what the supercomputer got its will, intellect, and emotion from so many it has destroyed. Okay, so by continuing to target you, they're just continuing, and, and millions of other targeted individual and mind control victims are simply continuing to protect the technology. Now, this is not just about the building of conscious computers. That's very important, okay? This is a weapon system. The first government in the world who is able to, to perfect and implement this, this new weapon system will, will have an incomparable advantage over every other government on Earth. So there's, a, there's an arms race. There's a a race to, to develop this technology, uh, neuro warfare, it's cognitive warfare. That's what's happening. Uh, the Ukraine, all the revolutions that broke out in the Ukraine, that's neuro warfare between the Russians and the Americans. The Ukrainians don't know it. Okay, they just think they're having global, uh, you know, upheaval and revolution in the streets. No, the American CIA was using neuro warfare on the Ukrainians in 1991. Thousands of Muslims surrendered on CNN. They, they surrendered with their arms raised and no weapons dismantled. All these thousands and thousands of soldiers, of Iraqi soldiers in 1991 in the first Gulf War, were filmed with their weapons dismantled, <laughs> walking, with their hands, walking with their hands raised. Okay? Well, a reporter became curious. A reporter became intrigued. So he walked up and he asked all these thousands of, you know, he talked to a bunch of them. He said, "Now I understand. I understand why you surrendered. You didn't want to die, but well, why did you first dismantle your weapons before you surrendered?" And you know what? All the, those Iraqi soldiers in the interview—they all said the same thing. They said, "Because Allah told us to." Allah said that before we could surrender, we had to dismantle our weapons. It was not Allah. It was not their false god Allah. It was the CIA DOD using voice of God and synthetic telepathy. This is a weapon system. All the in the Arab Spring, all these revolutions break down in the Arab world. That's a neuro warfare between the Russians and the Americans. The Americans are just better at it right now than the Russians. Okay? So this is a – first of all, the first thing you need to understand is this is a weapon system. Okay? The, the, the trauma-based mind control. There's a movie called Clockwork Orange. Uh, and in that movie, I never, saw, I never saw the movie, but in the movie – in the movie Clockwork Orange, they, the scientists tried to turn a bad person into a good person. They tried to turn a violent criminal into a peaceful pacifist who would shut down in the face of extreme violence. Well, they, they used sleep hypnosis. They used hypnosis. They used behavior modification, et cetera. They failed in that movie. Okay. But, but trauma-based mind control is the exact opposite of the movie Clockwork Orange. It's about turning a person into a weapon. It's about... It's about turning a good person into a bad person or a bad person into an evil person, okay, by amplifying destructive habits, by amplifying emotions, etc. okay? So they want you to inflict destruction upon others, on, upon your community, or they want you to self-destruct. And at the point that you inflict destruction upon others or you self-destruct, that's an important metric in their training, research, and development of how their technology works, how effective the technology is. So first understand these conscious computers, they have a will, intellect, and emotion of their own, but it's artificial. It was copied from so many thousands, millions that, that they have destroyed with this technology. Now. Brian? Brian? Yeah. Brian? Hi, it's Melinda C. How are you? Great to hear your voice, buddy. <laughs> uh -huh. Listen, I have a question, real quick question. I have no idea who uh, my uh, framer is. I have had no voices, no neighbors, nothing. Nobody say one word to me uh, since this has gone on three years that I've known about it and probably seven or eight. I think I know who it is. Um, would, he's a real microcontroller. Would he, although they say once you turn in, uh, once you frame somebody, you have nothing else to do and it's taken over, 
Will he be at all following the progress with me or following anything with me or or suggesting stuff for me or anything like that? Yeah. Um, okay, listen, they, they have various um, scenarios they'll engage in, scripts that they'll engage in for the purpose of that. They introduce people. Gang stalking, street theater is also about introducing variables into the mind control victim's life for the purpose, again, of, of, of manipulation, deception and manipulation for verification. Let's, let's talk about that. Honey traps, for example, where they'll bring or, – or good cop, bad cop – where they'll bring a person into – it doesn't always involve the police. I mean, it could be anybody, good cop, bad cop. It's just called that. That's what the script is called that they use. Um, they bring people into your life, whether they're friends or, or you know, family or whatever, um, and they manipulate those people to turn them against you. Um, or they use them as, as the mechanism for introducing trigger stimuli into your life for the purpose of perfecting their technology. Let me explain. Uh, I, I, I talked about this earlier on another call, but I'll go over it again. Okay. One of the things that they do is they target – in order to isolate a person, they can't – you can't isolate that individual from everyone on earth. I mean, you could throw them in a prison cell, but even then, if you threw them in prison, they still have to be fed and clothed and washed. Yeah. And, you know, you know, I mean, you can't isolate a person. Even when you do that, it, it becomes problematic. The, you can't isolate an individual from everyone on earth. It's not possible. And it's not practical. They don't have to, okay? In order to isolate an individual, all they have to do is to isolate you from people who are important to you in your life, Okay. That's what they well, do. They have, they, they have totally, and I know they have not spoken to these people because these are people from 30, 40 years, friends, and all of a sudden they're not returning my calls. I'm heartbroken. Well, again, and, and I don't know how they're doing it, subliminal or what. I'm, I'm so you. angry and hurt. You know, they're doing it. They're doing a great job, and I'm so upset about it all. I, I, it's just so meaningless for all of us. And uh, uh, at this stage in my life, I'm 73, and I need to go through this losing friends. What could they? What could they possibly do to these people to uh, to have them disengage from me? I have done nothing to them. You know well, what I'm saying? Thing, nothing. My, I'm sorry, Brian. It's upsetting. I know, I know. But let me let me explain how how it's happening, and then we'll talk about how you defeat it. Okay? Uh, stop them from doing that. Okay? So, so what they do is they, is, is they need to isolate you to force you to internalize on their neuroprogramming. So remember, they need to minimize all external interference. And the way they do that is by isolating you, by creating a hostile environment everywhere you go, okay? I would go from hotel to hotel around the world, and every hotel I'd go into, they had me kicked out of the hotel. They would create a hostile environment everywhere on earth that I went, okay? Why? Because it is a scientific fact. It is a medical fact that – that no living organism can survive in, a, in an environment which is constantly hostile. They, that, there is scientific evidence to show this. It is not possible. No living organism can survive in a constantly hostile environment. So they, want, they create a constantly hostile environment to, to isolate you, to force you into isolation, where there's no external interference on their neuro programming, where you're forced to internalize or internally focus on, on the technology, on the neuro programming, et cetera. Okay, and the way they do that is the way they isolate you from people is they find out the people in your life that are most important to you or that you deal with the most, such as family and friends and coworkers, et cetera. How? How do they find out who those people are? Through a process called influence mapping and negative associative conditioning. Influence mapping is a business marketing strategy. I think I talked about this on a previous call. Um, what they're doing is um, – when, when a business, okay, when a B, in a B two B relationship, when a business wants to sell its product or its, you know, its service to another business, that business that wants to sell will find out what the other company, who they want to sell to. They'll find out the people in that company who have the most influence, who who are the most important people in that company, who make the decisions, okay, and then they'll target those people who are most important. Why? To get them to buy their product, okay? So they don't target the janitor. They don't target the administrative personnel. They're not important. They don't decide on the daily affairs of that company. You know, it's just not practical for them to target those people. It's not, not, it's not necessary either. They target the vice president, the president, the, you know, uh, the people that make the most – the important people that make the decisions. Okay, and then, and then it's called influence mapping. 
and then they get them to try to get them to buy their product. The, the CIA and DIA hive mind teams are using influence mapping on targeted individuals, on mind control victims. How? They're mapping out. They're they're mapping out uh, your the, the data mining your 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 calls, your emails, etc. To find out who, right, right to find out who it is in your life that's most important to you, and then they begin to target those people every time you come around or every time you call them or something. They begin to target those people with what's called negative associative conditioning. Well, that's, ne- that's a neuro, uh, uh, linguistic programming. No, no, no. It's negative associative conditioning because they're not always neural programming is for mind control victims. Okay, they're not all. They're, most of them are not mind control victims. They're just targeted to, because you're the victim. They want to target you. Okay, so they go after the people in your life that are important to you, your coworkers, your family, your friends, etc. Okay. And so every time you come around, they create a negative stimulus. It's called negative associative conditioning. For example, every time you come around the boss or your pastor or your friend, your best friend, they get a headache or they get uh, nausea. That's a directed energy attack, okay? Or their dog dies or their car breaks down. Every time you come around, some type of negative event occurs, okay, until that person begins to start to correlate all those negative events with your presence, they begin to correlate all those negative events with you. And they begin to see you as bad news and bad luck, and they begin to avoid you like the plague. They want to stay away from you, okay? Because you're just, you're, you, every time you come around, something horrible happens. That's called negative associative conditioning, okay? So they, they isolate you by using influence mapping. And then once they've mapped out who your, your social circle is, the people that are important to you, they begin to target those people until everybody turn away from you or they become your enemy. Okay. Now, that's called uh, that's that. For example, that's a good cop, bad cop script. Um, now let's talk about honey traps for people that uh, or people they'll introduce into your life uh, for the purpose of mind control. The people that they, they, the reason they bring people into your life, honey traps, you know, to, to trap you. Um, it's because these people are used to, to, to help deceive and manipulate the mind control victim to introduce trigger stimuli, trigger words, or trigger situations to constantly provoke you into emotional responses, et cetera, which can be remotely measured, okay, and then integrated back into r and data, et cetera. So the, 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 the person that they're using against you, you know, if they are aware of what's going on and they are part of the paradigm, is simply the mechanism by which they're introducing the trigger stimuli to keep you constantly engaged because they need to constantly provoke you. All, you know, all, remember, the supercomputer is monitoring all thoughts, uh, uh, all electromagnetic activity of your brain. So you know, they, it's easier for them to, 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 to introduce somebody into your life that's part of the paradigm that can, that can, that can introduce all these trigger stimuli, trigger colors, trigger words, trigger objects, trigger images. All these situational and conversational scenarios can be achieved much more easily than gang stalking simply by introducing a person into your life, such as a honey trap. That person yeah, well, is the mechanism. Yeah, well, no such luck. <laughs> what else do they introduce? <laughs> They're kind of taking everybody away. I mean, there's nobody in my building which looks like a prison. There's nobody walking. It's, and I'm sure they're all FBI agents. They, they come for eight hours and leave. You know, they don't live here. No, it's really it's good isolation. I have um, uh, have a I have a good example, a great example, just from today. Every day, I have an example on what you're speaking about. Really intriguing. You said a lot, but um, I get a lot of pain in my head. It feels like bees stinging my head, and then it feels like there's actually antennas coming out of my head. When I'm in my apartment, like at night a lot, or even during the day, and I think that they're telling me to go, get get out of my apartment and go do something. And I try to fight it, you know, and, and when I do go out, I feel better. But I also feel like I am responding to that stimulus. So if I want to stay inside and rest, and it's coming in and it's hurting, um, what do you suggest? What they're doing is called behavior modification with a pain stimulus. Okay? It's called censorship. Okay? It's called um, remote neural manipulation. Okay, let me explain. Okay, so what they're doing is they're using, they're using pain and trauma 
And they use it for a variety of reasons. Remember, we just talked about this. They use it uh, to censor your to activities or to force you into an action or access sequence um, to depattern your mind. And when I say depattern the mind, this is very, very important that you understand this. When I say depattern the mind, I'm, I'm, also, I'm also referring to disrupting your continuity of thought, erasing short-term memory. Now, trauma and pain work very well to depattern the mind to disrupt your continuing of thought, to erase short-term memory. How? Trauma is used to clear the neural pathways, okay, of any additional uh, electromagnetic energy, uh, thoughts and memories. Why? Because all the, all the victim can do is concentrate on the pain. So it clears the mind. It, it clears the mind so that they can begin to repattern with microwaves, okay, with, with streams of uh, with a falsified fabricated stream of energy. Okay. But but that's what, what trauma is used for. Okay, so if they want you to, to if they for example they need they need to, to to pitch you in some type of action or access sequence, they need you to do something, then they'll make you know uh, they'll make it unbearable for you. For example, every time I would lay down, uh, back when I was in San Diego, California, but when I was first targeted, they would hammer my ears, and they kept me in just a constant state of motion. All right, remember, they were trying to set me up for workers' comp fraud or whatever they were doing. Okay, so they just kept me moving constantly because I couldn't, I couldn't relax. I mean, every time I tried to relax, they would just hammer me, you know, yeah. with these microwaves. So they kept me on the move constantly. Okay, uh, again, deception and manipulation designed to just, you know, distract and torture the victim into submission to the system's influence. Well, that's what's happening to you. They're seeking to distract and torture you into submission to the system's influence. You're not being attacked by people. You're actually being attacked by a supercomputer. The supercomputer is thinking of uh, constantly manipulating you. It's constantly attacking you. Now, now, now people are involved. Uh, the hive mind team, the clone, for example, is involved in the attacks. But even when he wants to attack you, he has to interface with the supercomputer. So you're not being attacked electronically by a person. You're being attacked by a supercomputer, by a stream of energy. Okay, and one of the things that they do is they constantly use trauma and pain to provoke you into some type of sequence uh, for, for the purpose of, of, of verifying their technology. If they need to get you, and a lot of times they want to keep you in the house. They want to isolate you from everyone and everything. Okay, but it depends on what stage and, you know, what they're, what they're trying to accomplish, what program you're in, what objectives they're trying to achieve with that program. Okay, because remember, it's all about their ability to predict and influence your reference choices. And when I, said, when I talk about reference choices, I'm talking about choice reference patterns. Well, one of the ways they do that, you know, they use impulse sequence, sequencing, they use memory attack. We've talked about that already. Well, another way that they do that is through the use of trauma. Okay? Why? Why, why is that so important? Because they're trying to map evoked potential. They're trying to map the impulses that you're having with, with identifiers uh, to, to, for, to try to figure out your composition habits, to try to... to Remember, these attacks are thought-triggered attacks. They attack during they attack during thought composition. So they need to pitch you into some type of action or access sequence for the purpose of, of determining uh, how best to map out your brain. Okay. So you know it may be you know you know you're just you know going to work or 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 you know going to the store or you know going to visit a friend or whatever. Okay. But they're, they're using trauma to manipulate. It's called remote neural manipulation, and they're using physical pain and trauma to, to do that, okay? Just like they were doing with me. They were, they were keeping me in an endless state of just constant motion, just continuous motion, because every time I try to relax, they would just hammer me, okay? Um, again, it depends on what program you're placed into. I really can only tell you, uh, you know, uh, I really the only point of reference I really have on this on this technology is, is trauma based mind control and state of the art mind control. Um, but that's what sounds to me what they're doing to you is they're running you some, through some type of verification routine. When I say verification routine, I mean the, the system, the remote neural monitoring system, is constantly probing you for a set of responses in order to establish a pattern. Remember, everything they're doing is based on patterns. They need to identify and develop coherent patterns of thought, coherent patterns of your behavior, et cetera. Why? To link descriptions with your responses. Mm -hmm. So they're going to keep constantly probing you for responses. And one of the ways they do that is by using pain and trauma. Okay? And once they figure out, you know, once they begin to verify that what the response is, what it is you respond to, 
those selected responses, once they determine they have enough of those responses, that's called response statistics. Okay, then that's when they, that's when they correlate all that information and integrate it back into RNN data. But it's just used for the next wave of your endless harassment. The process right. is endless. Right. Okay, so, so if you're in, like I'm in, and the, the, the bottom line is, all right, I, I'm in, I want to be in for the night, 7 o'clock, whether it's Friday or Saturday night, I choose to be in. But I'm in so much pain, it can happen during the day anytime. And I, I go out a lot. I mean, I work, I work, and all those things that you talk about have the harassment at work, I've had all of that. But um, it's interesting, it's, it's becoming less. And less and less. Um, for instance, today, it's funny. Um, I talked about I need a new ink for my computer, right? So I, I, all right, I have my little bag all set, ready to go, pick it up. The night before, I laid it out, picked it up, went into Costco. And as soon as I got there, I'm talking to the, the guy behind the desk about this ink that was being recycled that I, it, it didn't work in my, in my HP. So I said, listen, I um, I picked this up two weeks ago, and I put it in my computer, and the ink a jet won't won't work. It's saying that it's not filled with ink. And he immediately started to give me a hard time, and it was staring at me, staring me down. And I thought, oh, this is okay. Here we go, another one. And so um, it was it it was interesting um, because. He was really giving me a hard time. I kind of walked away from it. And I just left my little inks there and, and told him I'd be back in about 20 minutes to pick them up and stuff. And he said, well, you don't want to recycle your ink anyway. You want to buy a brandy new one, blah, blah, blah. I said, well, when I bought this HP um, printer, you guys told me that I could recycle my ink and all this. So anyway, I'm up at the, at the um, counter. I'm checking out. And the manager was there. And I said, hey. I said, because it's getting easier for me, a little bit easier. And I must say that prayer and meditation does help. <laughs> I must say that. But um, I'm standing there, and I'm talking to the manager. And um, not being bad mouth in this guy, nothing like that. But it was, it was cool because they went over. They gave me free ink. Um, they put $50 back on my credit card. But, you know, the whole thing was is that, as soon as I walked in the door and as soon as I saw him, he saw me, I could tell immediately that he was going to give me a hard time. And let's, let's I, talk. I, you know, let's, and I, let's, I knew that he probably learned, you know, from somewhere because it's, it's been happening to me so much. I have one more thing I want to ask you. Um, when I came home, I laid down for about an hour and a half, and I have had really weird, you know, since I've been in this program, which has been like about six years now, dreams and these memories keep keep coming back about old friends and college friends and stuff like that and i had um another pretty crazy dream about you know a friend that i knew in college who i tried to facebook but won't but won't they won't friend me back and i only tried once and i had this dream this afternoon about about him and some other people and i immediately woke up and when i woke up i thought am i not like Make sure you contact him again, and and make sure you find out why he won't friend you on Facebook. And then I, that was my immediate reaction. And then I thought, you know what? Do I really care? Um, do I really need this person to be my friend on Facebook? But all these thoughts in my head was like, find out why he won't friend you on Facebook. And then I thought, no, no, I'm not going to do that. But can they come in? And, and manipulate your dreams too. Yes, yes, it's called dream modulation. Let's talk first about what happened with the ink, okay? okay. And then we'll talk about we'll talk about dream modulation. Okay. Okay. Remember, I told you. Hold on, I just I just somebody just slipped something under my hotel door. Hold on just a second. Hold on, I'm so, I'm so sorry about this. Uh, okay, never mind. Okay. All right, so let's talk first about what happened with the ink. Okay, remember, I told you, uh, they're trying to modify your active memory. They're using falsified and fabricated memories. Every time you think of something, that's a memory. Okay, the moment you think about it, the first 
split second, it becomes a memory, okay? That's called short-term memory. The, the technology is designed to modify your short-term memory. I call it active memory because it's those thoughts which you're actively considering at the moment. You're formulating your thoughts and you're preparing to act. What you were formulating your thoughts about was the ink cartridge. The supercomputer captured those, those memories in real time at speed of light, okay? And then it began injecting back into your, 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 your subconscious thoughts, re repetitive thoughts about the ink cartridge, okay? To get you, to pitch you into an action or access sequence, meaning they wanted you to go to the store. They wanted you to, to buy new ink. They don't care anything about ink. They care about their technology, okay? Okay, so what they're doing is they're seeking to modify your active memory, okay? To, to, to constantly, whether you realize it or not, okay, the system is constantly influencing, influencing you to make minor choices. Motivationally, motivational impulses. Remember I told you impulse injections, okay? To influence you in a manner to say, think, or do something. In this case, it was the ink, okay? So, what happened? They had somebody behind you and somebody in front of you on the way to the ink store, on the way to Best Buy or wherever it is you went, Costco, okay? Then they had somebody waiting at Costco, okay? Why? To verify their technology. Why were they following you? To keep you from defeating the technology. What would have happened if you had spontaneously turned into the bank on your way to Costco? You would have you would have broken the pattern, okay? You would have defeated their technology, the pattern that they were trying to build, okay? Um, the coherent thought patterns regarding the ink cartridge in Costco, pitching into an action sequence of going to the store. So they've got somebody waiting at that store whose specific intention is to provoke you. Now that's exactly what happened. All of it designed to target your short-term memory during the formulation of your thoughts as you're preparing to act, to manipulate you, in this case, to going and getting the ink, okay? And then when you got to the ink store, there was all kinds of chaos and trauma and provocations. All of that is how they map out your brain. All of that is how they, 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 um, they now what happened was, is a situational scenario that turned into a conversational scenario. The situational scenario was going to, the, to buy the ink. The conversational scenario, street theater, okay, street theater, was the person waiting at the store provoking you into conversations about the ink, provoking you into arguments. All of it designed to modify your active memory, your short-term memory, to get you to do what the supercomputer wants you to do. So you don't realize it. But it's constantly, this supercomputer is constantly trying to influence you to make minor decisions. Why? To, to manipulate your daily motives to achieve direct behavioral control. Okay? So it could be something as minor as ink or peanut butter, or it could be something as major as sex, you know, uh, or religion or, you know, politics. You know, all that matters is that they know you will respond. That's what's important. So they give you, they gave you the desire. Remember, I told you, they don't force you to do anything. They give you the desire. The desire was for you to go to the store, okay? And then, and then in the process of that action and access sequence, they were able to interject and, and create conversational and situational scenarios designed to constantly provoke you into arguments, to, to constantly provoke you into emotional responses, which could be remotely measured. Okay, so that's going on every day. They're going to they're going to continue to do that. All right, let's talk about now. That's modification of your active memory, modification of your short term memory. All right, let's talk about dream modulation. All right, dream modulation is part of you said neuro linguistic programming. Those are not the same, uh, although neuro linguistic programming is used in dream modulation. There are two. Those are two different programs. Uh, dream modulation may include. Uh, uh, two-dimensional images. It may include verbal entrainments, visual entrainments, uh, etc. Okay, what they're doing is it's part of the neuro programming. They're seeking to to uh, use, uh, in this case, falsified memory to in order to to manipulate in order to manipulate your memory and thought process. They're using this the neuro programming to inject into your. Uh, it's called theta state. Okay, theta state level where they. Where they, when you dream, you're in REM state, okay? That's, that's deep sleep, okay? When are people most vulnerable, okay? When have people, when have armies, when have animals been, been, been most vulnerable? At, when they're sleeping. A person is most vulnerable, an army, an, an animal is most vulnerable 
throughout history, when they are asleep, that's when they target you with this technology, with the neuroprogramming, when you're sleeping, for sleep hypnosis, okay? So that the next day they can engage in these sequences to determine whether or not the dream modulation is working properly. Why? To rewire your memory and thought process. This is not just about manipulation of your memory and thought process. This is about rewiring the way you think. Okay, your memory and thought process. And dream modulation is used to achieve that. And th listen, just like, the, just like the organized stalking, just like the situational and conversational scenarios will always be based on topics or events that they know will capture your attention. Okay, remember, if they can't capture your attention, their mega billion dollar technology fails. Everything is dependent upon their ability to capture your attention, to get you to look their way, to get you to respond. Okay, same with dream modulation. They need to be able to verify whether the, whether the, ver the visual and verbal and trains, whether uh, uh, the, excuse me, the, the, the two-dimensional images, et cetera, that they're using uh, is working properly. The other night, I caught them doing it, okay? I, uh, the other day, I woke up, and I just laid motionless in my bed, and I kept my eyes closed. I, I trained myself to do that, and I was able to see the dream modulation happening for about 10 to 15 seconds, and then they stopped it. The supercomputer, re supercomputer realized I was awake. And what was happening was they were targeting my faith and belief system with dream modulation. And what they were doing was they had a, a scenario in, in my mind where uh, uh, a dream where there was a giant sun, a disk of light as big as the sun, that was slowly being eclipsed by a total disk of darkness, like a, like a, 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 a solar eclipse. You know, it's being eclipsed by this disk of darkness. And while that, while that was happening, while this bright disk of light was being eclipsed by a disk of darkness, the chatterbox, the, the automated special language software program was repeating the words, Jesus is darkness. Jesus is darkness. It was saying it over and over in a looping pattern. Okay? It was seeking to manipulate my, my faith and belief system. This is important. This is very important. Okay? Um, but, you know, again, it depends on what program you what what, what, tr what project they placed you into. It sounds like you're monarch, but I'm not sure. Okay, so they want to sensitize you to a particular color or, or item or object. So they'll inject that two-dimensional image during dream modulation, and they'll, they'll, they'll inject it over and over in a looping pattern, okay? And generally, some, some type of stimuli is attached to that. And uh, whatever it is they're trying to achieve with you, I don't know. Obviously, I don't know you. I don't know your situation, Okay. But dream modulation is used to condition the, the uh, to get to, to to rewire your memory and thought process to uh, to subdue or to radicalize you towards some type of of, of, of sequence action or access sequence. So I um, I I need to hear more about the dreams to tell you, but that's what's happening. It's called dream modulation. They're they're okay. using uh, visual and verbal entrainments, etc., in order to manipulate your memory and thought process. Yeah. You know, um, you know, I'm saying this quote that they, well, David, I think David Voigt said this, that if you know what they're doing and you know that you're in a study, I know I'm in a study. I don't know what one. Now, I, it, actually, I, I think I might know which one. It's a number, actually. Anyway, but he said you're more likely to be left alone if you know about it. No. Um, in the long run? No. No. No, they're not going. No, they're not going to leave you alone. Listen, they, this this is long term research, training, research and development. They're not going to leave you alone. If they leave you alone, the research begins to erode, and then they got to start all over again. Okay, they're yeah. they're going to keep on until they've achieved whatever objective they're trying to achieve with you. Okay, um, you know, now, again, they may be trying to turn you into a heterosexual into a homosexual, a Christian into an atheist, a Muslim into a Jew, a pacifist into a Serial killer, et cetera. Whatever it is they're trying to achieve with you, they're going to continue until those objectives are accomplished. Okay, this is about training, research, and development. It's long term. This is not, you know, they're not just going to leave you alone. It's not going to happen. Okay? Um, my my but uncle, who was in the Vietnam War and all that, and has all this really good information, gave me a book. Um, it's called En Route to Global Occupation. And um, he said that 5%. Well, in tune with these studies, five percent of the, the people in these programs do defeat it, and you can defeat it by like things that you're saying. By you, you can defeat their technology. 
Yeah. Yes, you can you can defeat the technology, but this is not something that that you know once you defeat it they're going to go. Listen, listen. You there are ways to defeat their technology, but the, but the system is not going to stop attacking you just because you're able. Once they realize you're able, to, once the, the supercomputer, okay, the conscious computer, the, the hive mind team realizes that you're able to defeat the technology, they're going to want to know how, and they're going to they're going to seek to verify. To, to achieve their objectives by different means, okay? If you're able to defeat the technology, for example, by constantly redirecting, uh, you establish a working reference, whatever it is, and your working reference is whatever it is in life that makes you most happy, you know, and then you, every time you're attacked, you know, remote neural attacks happen, you go back, you just revert back, you redirect back to your, your working reference, whatever it makes you happy in life, and that's called redirection. That's one way to defeat their technology. Well, as soon as that happens, the system is going to probe you. They're going to... If systems going to, if once it sees you're, you're able to defeat the technology using redirection, it's going to seek to verify by different by different means. Okay, if you're if you're able to defeat the because one of the ways you defeat mind control is by defeating is by controlling, not defeating. Defeating is really a, a bad word because the system this this is this 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 is a supercomputer. It's not going to stop attacking you. Okay, um, but but but. So defeating is, is not a bad word. You want to you, you 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 defeat their technology by controlling the verification process, okay? And the way you do that is by redirection, by quenching. We talked about quenching earlier, by by multitasking, uh, by spontaneity. There are many ways to defeat this this uh, the, the technology. Um, but defeat really is a bad word. One of the ways that people can defeat their technology is by listening to pleasing music. Pleasing music not only entrains the brain away from the R&M supercomputer. They listen. They must stop the music. It's absolutely once they realize you're able to defeat their technology with pleasing music, they have no choice but to stop it. If they cannot, that's called censorship. If they cannot stop you from listening to pleasing music within three to six months, that that pleasing music, that dominant external extem- stimulus of the pleasing music, will permanently alter your brainwave signature. Meaning you will no longer feel the directed energy attacks. Oh, that's okay. Good. Meaning, yeah. So you you, you once well, see well, pleasing music alters your brainwave signature. So they have to stop it temporarily, immediately. As soon as you start listening to pleasing music, it lights up every area of the brain. It creates all this additional electromagnetic activity inside the neural pathways of your brain, and they can no longer make sense of what they see. The music and training the brain away. Uh, uh, of the mind control victim uh, away from their supercomputer by shifting the focus of attention from the supercomputer, from the, the from the stimulus of the supercomputer to the pleasing music. And what's hap- what happens is that the sensory lock-on, remember I told you, the RM supercomputer is designed to lock on to you, to lock on to your emotional state, to lock on to your memory and thought process. It's called the sensory lock-on, okay? It's jostled. Okay, and no, and, and, and the supercomputer can no longer monitor your emotional state. It can no longer monitor your, your thoughts in real time. Okay, and because, because this can't happen, thought triggered attacks cannot occur. And when thought triggered attacks cannot occur, mind control fails. Because remember, this, this is modification of active memory. This is short term memory. They're targeting you and your formula and your thoughts. Well, they have to be, that's what remote neural monitoring is about. Capturing the thoughts of the mind control victim during the silent monitoring period. Well, music defeats now, not elevator music. It has to be music which is pleasing to you. Defeats their technology. Okay, well, as soon as you try to defeat their technology with this music, they have to stop you. If they do not stop the mind control victim from listening to pleasing music every day, that pleasing music within three to six months will permanently alter the brainwave signature of the mind control victim. And the moment that happens, the moment that the brainwave signature of the mind control victim is permanently altered, you will no longer feel the directed energy. Oh, you'll no longer feel the uh, the, uh, the mind control remote neural attacks. They'll cease immediately. Okay. Now they can still zap you with directed energy, but this is not about zapping people. This is about mind control. Okay. And then they got to start all over again. Okay. And and they got to start from from you know, maybe 20 years of research, 30 years of research will go down the drain. I mean, become absolutely worthless. So censorship. They got to censor your ability. To, they got to stop you from doing that. So one of the ways you do that is, is, is I mean, again, listening to pleasing music. But understand, the system is not going to stop attacking you, okay? It's probing you constantly for responses, okay, and then trying to predict your, 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 your responses as you're formulating your thoughts. It's not going to stop attacking, 
Okay, so don't don't think that's going to end. You know, uh, for some people it ends. Uh, no, if your trauma-based mind control, it does not end for you. They're not going to allow the trauma-based mind control victim to walk away. It's not going to happen because you could become a loose cannon. You could come back in the future to testify against them, etc. They're not going to allow that to happen. Okay, too many variables involved. Now there are people who are trauma-based monarch victims who the torture has stopped for them for the time being. You know, it has stopped, but they, they didn't walk away. They're still being monitored. Same with you. I see. But if you insist, because believe me, about eight, seven years ago, this was horrible. I could not, I listened to pleasing music and and tried, but the sound in my ears and the sound within inside my body was just so loud. That it was really right. That's I persisted. censorship. I persisted. That's censorship. Yeah. I yeah. persisted and I kept on listening to pleasing music and I still do. And I always will. Um, and that has helped tremendously. And so it's back it's down a little bit, you know, but I still get those hits and those hits are hard. Um, but I, I just Look. can't help but think that someday, somehow, you know, I'm not going to give up hope that either – you know, somehow they 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 hopefully, you know, will stop. I mean, if what is their goal? To totally defeat you? To to really run you into the ground? I mean, what is that? What they're their trying goal to stop us? Yeah. Their goal is no. Their goal is about the training, research, and development of of, of uh, mind control technologies for the purpose of being able to. Okay, for for well, for three things, it's more than this. Okay, for for the purpose of achieving inter interdenominational communication, meaning synthetic telepathy, meaning remote viewing, etc. I mean, they need to perfect this technology for the mm -hmm. purpose of, of being able to re remotely manipulate time, space, and matter with one's brain waves. Okay, for the purpose of being able to obtain knowledge by mere contemplation. Okay, um, all of these these are their goals. These are the goals for, for the purpose of creating these conscious computers that are capable of running society, okay, and monitoring all, uh, 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 scaling it up to monitor all 300 million plus Americans, et cetera. Okay, uh, it goes on and on, okay. The, those are the reasons. And then in order, in order to be able to do that, they need the training, research, and development, and that's what's happening, okay. Now, there's something more diabolical going on. They're creating a new race of human beings, superhumans. Okay, Dr. Robert Duncan talked about this. He, he, he couldn't talk about it in great detail. He would refer to it vaguely, and people just didn't even catch on, and I was amazed. Okay, they're creating a new race of human beings, but they're not human. They're created from synthetic genomes, which are replicated stem cells. Okay, so right now, there are people walking around who are never born, who have no mother or father. They're not coming in the future. They're here now. Okay, they're superhumans. Okay, um, they have, uh, they were created in a laboratory, and then they were placed in a home, in an environment which they believe is home, and and they think mom and dad is mom and dad when in fact mom and dad are, are scientists. They're CIA and DIA DARPA scientists. Okay, they're not mom and dad. They have no mother and father. These superhumans are the reason why they're they're, they're trying to develop the technology to create a new cybernetic human species, a, literally a new species of human being, okay? These people are already walking around among you right now. They're worshiping in church with you. They're uh, sitting next to you at, at work. They're uh, I'm watching. <laughs> Brian, I'm sorry. There are two things you said twice. You said it twice. There is no way, no way, in heaven and in earth, that someone can take a, a real Christian and turn them into an atheist. I can tell you that for sure. And the other thing, they manipulate my dreams too. The one, the one time they did it for sure is when I had the flu and I lay on my sofa for a long time and was just pretty much motion, motionless. One dream they had, I knew absolutely it was a, it was a made up thing. I was, I was, all of a sudden I was in the church I grew up in. But I wasn't sitting in the congregation where I always was. I was up up on the um 
I was up by the piano, and they said, now Lonnie's going to play for us. I thought, I'm too sleepy to play. I can't do this. So I played as much as I could. I got up. Somebody helped me down the steps, and I walked out of the church, walked down the street, which I had never done, to some of the houses, and people were standing out there talking and saying something horrible. I mean, it had nothing to do with the truth in terms of Christian biblical truth. They were saying awful things. So I know these are evil people, but you can tell the difference in their dreams. And what happens? Does that supercomputer mess up or something? I believe God's in charge. And when he's well, in charge, there is, there is no fighting him. When he decides to take some, I have the mind of Christ. That's what the Bible says. If you read the whole thing, it says love him with your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength. And the one thing I've been doing since I started to get targeted is to get to know what he thinks. I need more to know. For 50 years, I didn't. I just coasted and enjoyed life. But now I want to know more about life in the way he looks at it. And I believe that's what every Christian needs to do. And I believe it's the safest thing that anybody on this earth right now can do. Because this is, this is a lot more diabolical than, it, it, than just the technology. It's more than transhumanism. It's this recreating human being that is, it is a front to the creator. And I definitely believe these people are going to be put right in their place, which was prepared for the devil. It's called the lake of fire. You know that. So I, I just don't want you to say ever again, if you would, please refrain from two things, really. One is stop calling Dwight and Derek or anybody else a perp unless you have hardcore proof, and you don't have any of that. Okay, the second thing is, stop saying that anybody on this earth with any kind of technology, physical technology, can turn a Christian into an atheist. There is no way to do it. Have a nice evening. <laughs> I like you. I really do. And I believe that you do want to know Christ, but you need to get to know him a little bit better. Start studying the New Testament. Read the Gospel of John over and over and over and over again if you have to. Because all you do is spread terror on these calls. And I think that is the – Dwight comes on and tries to help us. That's not what you do. You come on and try to spread all kinds of terror among these people. And that's wrong. And i got to go. And I'm sorry. <laughs> have a nice evening, everybody. Night, Lonnie. Uh, um, well, I, I don't. I don't believe that a Christian can. I don't believe a person who is a born again true Christian can can be um, willfully and deliberately uh, turn you turn using this technology. I believe that a person who is a Christian can be forced into a backslidden state and can lose their soul because of it. But it will be because of the choices that they make. Remember, the technology is designed to manipulate your choice reference patterns. It's based off previous choices. So they'll use, they'll amplify whatever destructive habits you have in order to try and destroy your will, intellect, and emotion, in order to destroy, to destroy your soul. But even Dr. Robert Duncan, who is not, who is not a Christian, uh, has said that, you know, Christianity is an effective uh, um, shield to this technology. He said, and he's not religious at all, okay? He, he's not a Muslim or Jew or anything. He's an atheist or an agnostic, and he said Christianity has some defenses, and he was referring to the doctrines of the faith, for example. But anyone will tell you it's not the doctrines of the faith, it's the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ does defeat this technology. Um, and that's Dr. Duncan will tell you that, and that Christianity does defeat this technology. But you need to understand that the technology is designed to manipulate your will, intellect, and emotion. And what is your will, intellect, and emotion? It's the soul. It's the, the personality. It's your human soul, okay? So they're targeting your soul with this technology, the will, intellect, and emotion. And they will amplify whatever destructive habits you have. If sex and lust is a problem for you, then they're going to have you thinking about sex and lust and engaging in sex or masturbating, you know, ten times a day in order to, to destroy you, to create a sexually insatiable appetite to use that sexually insatiable appetite as a weapon. But the same, same is true with whatever destructive habit you may have, whether it's drugs or alcohol or 
pornography or smoking or you know, your food or the eating disorder, they take whatever destructive habits you have and they, they amplify those destructive habits into a weapon with this, with this technology. And that's how they use it to destroy you. And I believe that people who – a lot of people out there are deceived. Um, they're, they're calling themselves Christians, and they're not Christians. And those people are easily targeted and manipulated and destroyed with this technology. However, I do not believe a born-again Christian. But let me tell you something. It's, it's much easier to turn a bad person into an evil person than it is to turn a good person into a bad person with this technology. It's just much more difficult. Okay, so I do not believe a born-again Christian – can lose their salvation with this bike control technology. I don't believe that can happen. I do believe a person can forfeit their salvation, and a person can just, and a person can forfeit their salvation by a deliberate and willful rejection of Jesus Christ. And if they're not careful, they can be led down the wrong road with this technology to to achieve that goal. Um, but born again Christians are not are, are not destroyed spiritually by mind control technology. Um, that's wrong. I never said that. Secondly, I'm not spreading terror on these calls. Jesus Christ is the only hope you have. And if you don't know Jesus, you have bigger trouble than mind control. Okay? I'm telling you, he is the only hope you have. You have no hope that the government will help you. Any government that, that admits to this level of torture and assassination would collapse overnight. I want to say that again. Any government, including the U.S., that admits to this level of torture and assassination on an industrial scale would collapse overnight. It's not going to happen. They're not going to let you just sit there and try to expose them. They're not. The government is not going to help you. When I say there is no hope, I'm referring to the, the government helping you, not to Jesus. Jesus can help you. He can defeat this technology, okay? But not the government's not going to help you. Period. It's not going to happen. Okay. Under the present scenario, now if there's a revolution in the streets, uh, you know there's there's great reform, you know, et cetera, then perhaps you know the, you know another another uh, MK Ultra uh, situation were to arise where the, you know, this was exposed, then the, the system, the scenario would be different. But under the present scenario, you're not going to get the government to help you. It's not going to happen. Okay, that's what I mean. I'm not here to spread terror. I'm not, but I'm, I'm a realist. Okay, I'm not. I'm just being realistic with you. As regards Dwight Mangum and Derek Robinson and these other government perpetrators, it does me no good. I have no vested interest in labeling people as perps. You can easily listen. Everything I told you this on the call. Everything they're doing is based on patterns, from mind control to coding thought patterns to organized stalking, choice reference patterns to to, to mind to memory management. Uh, previous memory reference pattern, et cetera. It's all based on their ability to identify and develop coherent patterns. It is those same patterns which give them away, which identify them for who they are. When they engage in these conversational scenarios and situational scenarios, they're easily identified by patterns of their conversation, by patterns of their behavior. And, you know, I, I told Derek, I told people for you know, two years, I said, Derek is a perp, and everybody called me every name in the book. And now people believe me. You know, people are starting to believe Derek Robinson is a perp because of what happened with FFCHS. Well, it's not just Derek people. It's other people as well. They're there. They're creating these forums. And Talk to you is a forum, okay, on the Internet. Remember, they can't control the Internet. It's too decentralized. So they use disinformation, misinformation, and misdirection tactics. And they're creating these forums, these Talk to you conference calls. Not everybody, but a lot of people, okay, in order to herd targeted individuals into these rooms where information can be more easily manipulated and controlled. It's happening. It's absolutely happening. Okay? And so by looking at patterns of, of, of their conversation, by looking at patterns of disinformation and misinformation, et cetera, you can begin to, de to see the people who are the perpetrators by, by the patterns of their conversation, by patterns of their behavior, et cetera. No doubt in my mind that, that Derek Robinson is a government perpetrator. And that others like him are. Okay? And you can easily identify them from looking by looking at patterns. Okay, everything again is based on pattern. But I want to say right now that they will go after your your religious and belief systems. That is a major target of mind control technologies. Okay? They, I mean they'll use synthetic telepathy, they'll use voice of God weapons where you know 
uh, they can, they can, sounds and voices can be, you know, uh, forced into your perception, uh, real and fabricated memories. We already talked about that, impulse injections. They're trying to map out all the vectors of your emotion, love, hate, fear, lust, despair, et cetera, using, using electromagnetic energy, using nanotechnology. They're going to go after your belief system, your religious belief system. If they find out you're religious, they're going to target you in that area. You better believe it's going to happen. Okay? So they'll, you know, that's how they first targeted me. I thought God was speaking to me when, back in 1997, 1998. They made me believe verbally and intuitively that God was talking to me. And they were, they, you know, I walked past somebody in the Cayman Islands in 1998, and I heard this omnipotent voice say, speak to him. Well, that was, you know, that was when they first used voice of God weapons on me. But they'll use images and symbols and thoughts, not just you know, voices, but they'll use synthetic telepathy. They'll use intuitive thoughts to make you believe God wants you to do something to pitch you in some type of action or access sequence, to make you believe. Now, I'm referring to religious people. I do not believe that this technology can defeat my, uh, born again Christians. I'm referring to people who are religious, like Muslims and Jews and, you know, Catholics and Protestants, people that don't really know God but are religious. They're, they're easily, easily manipulated with this technology. People who have no understanding of biocommunications technology, and even you know, less understanding of their religion, the doctrines of their religion are easily manipulated with this technology. So they'll make you believe, the technology is designed to make you believe that God or angels or demons or devils are speaking with you, okay, to manipulate your belief, just like they did the Muslims in 1991, the Iraqi soldiers. Allah told us to dismantle our weapons before we surrendered. You know, that, they were, these people were easily manipulated with this technology. They will go after your belief system with this technology. It will happen. Okay? And, I mean, they, a lot of these haunted houses that you're seeing, um, not all of them, but a lot of these demon possessions and haunted houses, you know what? These are nothing more than, than uh, uh, false flags uh, designed uh, to, to, to subdue or to radicalize a population, their religious beliefs, to to determine what a person, a targeted individual, a mind control victim, or a group of people can maintain as truth. Okay? So, yeah, uh, and I'm not trying to spread terror. I'm just a realist. We're not going to find any help from the government. Jesus Christ is the only person that can help you. He's the only person that can save you. And if you don't know, you know, Jesus, you've got bigger problems than mind control. But that's what trauma-based mind control is based on. It's not just based on neuroscience and psychology. It's based on... On torture, on ritual abuse, basically they're taking they're taking science and they're, and they're marrying it to the occult. So so yeah, a lot of these scripts that you're going to see are, are based on haunted houses or God or angels, Satan and demons, etc., to make you believe that they're talking with you, to manipulate your memory and memory and thought process as it regards your belief system. Okay, so they want to create psychological fear and paranoia that force you to shut down to no longer be able to physically and psychologically function in society, to, to increase trauma, to amplify trauma, to cause you to shut down and isolate, okay? Don't go after your belief system. If, uh, listen, they did it to me. They've done it to me, okay? Images, uh, will, you'll begin to see images in your mind, faces, or objects in the room will begin to move on their own. Okay, that's called, that's called synthetic telekinesis. They can move objects in your house using streams of energy, concentrated streams of energy. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. <clears throat> so they will go after your, 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 your religion and belief system with this technology. Absolutely. It's a major target. But I'm not saying that people who are born again who know Jesus Christ can, can, can lose their salvation. I am saying a person can forfeit their salvation. Big difference. If you have a... If I have a set of car keys and I lose those car keys, it's because of something that I did. I left them in that room or that room. They're not lost to God. God knows where those keys are. Okay? But I can take those car keys at any time and throw them in the trash can okay, and walk away. There's a difference between losing your salvation and forfeiting your salvation. You can't lose your salvation, but you can forfeit your salvation. Okay? How? By, by sin. By engaging and, and practicing sin. By, if you think grace... It's going to help you get over a mountain of sin. You are dead wrong. You are in for a rude awakening. You know, grace gives you the, the time and the ability to repent, but grace is not a license to sin. And this technology will be used to amplify whatever destructive habits you have, including that, those which are bad, sinful, okay? Drugs, uh, alcohol, sex, 
whatever it is that you will respond to, whatever destructive habit you have that they can amplify to use as a weapon against you with this technology, they will use. And that's specific. And even if you're not religious, okay, they'll still go after you. And, and but you know, instead of, instead of God, they'll use aliens. You know, you'll walk outside and you'll see a, a UFO over your house. Okay, this UFO, this alien ship over your house. Well, it's not a UFO. It's a hologram. Okay, and then so, shortly after that, aliens will start visiting you at night and they'll start talking with you. Okay, the, the, this this is all based on deception and manipulation. But it's done to manipulate the belief system of the victim. So if you're an atheist, they'll use aliens or some other stimulus. Uh, but if you're religious, then they'll use the God of your choice to make you believe. They'll use synthetic telepathy. They'll use voice of God weapons, etc. They'll use this technology to make you believe the God of your choice is speaking with you. Okay? Now, now that works very well on people who don't know Jesus. Okay? Um <clears throat> I'm sorry if what I have to say offends people. I'm not here to offend people. I'm here to You're try to help people. You're brilliant. Don't let that old lady throw you off track. You are probably no, the most profound guest. No, Lonnie, Lonnie's the a sweet lady. Lonnie, Lonnie is, a, is, a, is a sweet lady. I love Lonnie. Um, but you yeah, are so funny. I read Duncan's books, and you are telling the, the most factual assessment of what's going on and it's liberating um well the lady the lady was talking about dream modulation earlier they use dream modulation yeah, you know, to uh-oh right there brian yeah i was just going to say i was going to let him finish speaking uh they use right. dream modulation uh induced visions etc to make you believe god and angels and demons are speaking with you you know, to terrorize you, to to force you into physically and psychologically shut down, or, or you know, to 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 subdue or to radicalize your 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 belief system. You know, they want to subdue your belief system, so they use trauma. They want to radicalize your belief system, so they go after <coughs> your memory and thought process to make you believe God wants you to be a you know suicide bomber, or God wants you to pray or something. I, I mean, very very important target the religious beliefs of a person. Are, are, extremely there, are there any countermeasures that one can use or take against, or is the technology just so far ahead of the loop? Well, there's, there's, yeah, you can, you can defeat their, you can, you, there are ways to defeat their technology. But realize, as soon as you're able to defeat the technology, they're, they're going to, they're going to seek to verify by other means. They're not just going to sit there. Okay, the system is targeting you daily, 24 hours a day, constantly pr probing you for responses. Constantly trying to pitch you into action and access sequences using remote neural attacks to manipulate your daily motives and emotional perceptions, and that includes your religious beliefs. Um, so, yeah, I mean, for example, uh, there are four methods of shielding. Okay, there's passive shielding, there's chemical shielding, there's mental shielding, and there's electronic jamming. Now, now there are many other methods of shielding, but there are four methods to shield from this technology. Passive shielding is using passive materials like metal and Teflon and like Faraday cages, etc. That's passive shielding. Um, doesn't really work. It, it does provide some relief at certain frequencies. And so if you are able to get relief through passive shielding, I encourage you to do so. But the problem is that the, 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 the supercomputer is automated, active, and adaptive to, to the mitral victim. So as soon as you're able to defeat the technology to isolate the frequency and block the string, to block the frequency, the supercomputer is going to it's, – remember, it's automated, active, and adaptive. It's going to adapt at speed of light. It's going to vary the frequency. It's going to modulate the phase, the frequency, and the amplitude of the stream of energy. So you're able to block one frequency, but at it, speed of light, it's just, going to, it's just going to vary that frequency. So you're not going to be able to block the next frequency. I mean, it's, it's going to do this at speed of light. Okay, because it's automated, active, and adaptive to the mind control victim. So passive shielding does have some very little uh, uh, effect uh, with dealing with this technology, unless you're able to, you know, to make uh, unless you're able to build a, a magnetic uh, shield using superconductor materials that was perfectly enclosed and grounded, had its own ventilation and cooling system, etc. You know, superconductor materials theoretically would block the signal, but they're too difficult to obtain 
and too expensive for targeted individuals. Passive shielding just does not work very well. You right. do get some relief, but not much. The second method of shielding is called chemical shielding, and, and that's the use of, of you know, of drugs uh, like Valium and Ativan and things to help you relax, you know. And that does have some limited effect, chemical shielding. But you have to understand that those substances are highly addictive. The substances that would help you with this technology, such as Valium and other, these are highly addictive substances. And they remember, they will use whatever, you know, destructive habit you have against you. They'll amplify that. So they'll turn a drug addict out of you real quick with this technology. You have to be careful. You know, you can't just continually take Valium for the rest of your life. It's not possible. These, these highly addictive substances, will, 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 you'll end up being far worse off than you were before. So chemical shielding is not very – it does offer some limited effect for a short period of time, but it's just not very effective. The what, third what about, category – What about psychological medications for the depression, or is there nothing – I mean, everybody stays stay with – That's chemical shielding. That's chemical shielding. Okay, when you're using – when you're taking – I don't know what, what psychological medicines they, they take um, – for this, I, 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 I know that they threw me in a mental institution for 10 days after I said a bunch of people were following me. That's how they discredited me. I went to the hospital, said all these people were following me because I asked some antidepressants. Well, they threw me in a mental institution for 10 days and then made it look like I had volunteered to go in. <laughs> so as soon as I, you know, demanded to be released and signed a piece of paper, they had to release me. But for 10 days, they made, it, they made me believe that I was stuck there. But the point is they tried to get me to take these medicines uh, so I don't, but I don't remember what those medicines are. Uh, I won't take them. But the point is this: um, that's chemical shielding, and it does have some limited effect. But the problem is, again, you're dealing with a system with um, a supercomputer, which is automated, active, and adaptive. So it's, you know, it's just going to increase the trauma based on whatever counter move you take. It's, it's, just, it's going to adapt to that at the speed of light. Okay. In other words, it's, it's constantly locked on. The sensory lock on is it's constantly locked on to your emotional state. So, so if you know you're able to 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 find some relief with chemical shielding, then by all means, just be, you need to be careful because some of these substances are highly addictive. The third category of, of shielding is mental shielding, and then the fourth category is electronic jamming. Electronic jamming is the only defense that we have to this technology. However, it's not available to targeted individuals. Almost all targeted individuals, because the the equipment, the hardware alone, would cost a fortune. You know, really? just an electromagnetic spectrometer would cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. That's just one piece of equipment, okay? And 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 it would cost a fortune. And even if you have the equipment, you don't have the expertise to to operate that equipment. So electronic jamming does work. It does work, but we just don't have the money or the expertise to be able to do it. Um, so really, the only the only effective method of shielding, although the others do offer some limited effect, uh, chemical and, and passive shielding, is mental shielding, and it's the fourth, the third category. So you've got four categories: you've got passive shielding, chemical shielding, mental shielding, and electronic jamming. Well, electronic jamming works, but we can't do it. We can't do it. So mental shielding is the best, most effective method. For, for countering and defeating this technology. And mental shielding is simply learning to read active memory and being able to contrast your own memory, your own normal memory and thought process with their artificial remote neural attacks, memory, you know, uh, impulse injections, et cetera. Um, memory, for example, uh, multitasking. Uh, when you're thinking and doing multiple things at one time, such as working out and listening to music or whistle while you work or singing in the shower, et cetera, doing multiple things at one time. This creates multiple threads of thought. Remember, they're, 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 they're seeking to identify single coherent patterns of thought to map out your brain into a cognitive model. Well, uh, when you're dealing with, when you, when you begin to multitask, it creates multiple threads of thought. Now, you're not thinking of multiple threads, really. You're toggling back and forth. But, but, but that it creates all this additional electromagnetic energy inside the neural pathways, and they can't make sense of what they see on this screen. Listen, if the hive mind teams – listen, uh, DIA is far worse than CIA ever was. DIA is ruthless. Okay, I used to work for the Department of Defense. I'm telling you, DIA is as ruthless as CIA ever was. Okay, brutal. Okay, listen, if you're able 
if you're able to defeat the technology, they're just going to, the system is going to adapt immediately to whatever it is you do, okay? So mental shielding is, is the most effective, okay? But at the same time, you know, whether you're, whether you're multitasking, you're redirecting, quenching, or whatever, remember, the, the system is going gonna, gonna to modulate. It's going to vary its speed of light to go after you. So you're constantly going to have to keep mentally shielding yourself. And multitasking is one way that you achieve that by doing or saying, um, by thinking and doing multiple things at one time. And so it creates multiple threads of thought. And when they can't make sense of they can't make sense of what they see on their screen when, when, when they're seeing multiple threads at the same time, because all this additional electromagnetic energy, it's called noise. The, the hive mind teams call it noise, okay? And they can't, it's not noise, it's not sound, it's energy. But they can't make sense of what they see on their screen. And when they can't make sense of what they see on their screen, they're forced to revert they're forced to revert back to your past activity. Okay. What, what do I mean when I say past activity? I mean your choice reference patterns. They're, they're forced to reverse back. Sorry. I was just going to say, Brian, um, I have about 30 minutes left on the call. Um, so I just wanted to give you a heads up on that. So, Brian, well, anyway. uh, so now Brian can I ask you a question since you're on this subject? Because I think something that keeps happening to me relates, and I haven't been able to figure it out. Whenever I get something that helps, just like you say, what they do, though, is they turn it around on me, and they use it as a weapon against me, whether it be calling on help, whether it be an object that, you know, I find has helped me. And I'm trying to figure out. I go through it anyway. I, I, I say to myself, well, I know this helps. I'm going to do it anyway. But they keep making it more painful for me to do this thing that I would do to help myself. So how mentally, since we're on that subject, how can I defeat this? Okay, that's hyper game theory. Okay, they're, 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 what you're doing every time you're finding something that helps, that's a choice reference. Okay, they're, going, they're basing their responses off your choice reference patterns. They're basing their next response off your last response, their next move off your last move. So as soon as you find something that helps, they're basing their next move off whatever you found that helped. And their next the move is to, whenever I use something to help, to make it feel so awful that I won't right. use it. To keep you into a, to keep you, to constantly keep forcing you into a, an endless series of counter moves. Right. Because each so counter move. If I keep doing the same move, for instance, I believe in help in the inner realm, so I call on it. And I know it works because it's worked my whole life. But now all of a sudden they make me feel awful when I do it, but I keep doing it anyway. Is that a good technique? Well, what they're doing, that's behavior modification using a pain stimulus. Okay. Right. They're seeking to modify your behavior by pain, trauma. Okay, so listen. They're trying to make me stop doing it. Right. What they're, listen, what they're doing is this, Okay. They're basing their next move and response off your last move and response to pitch you into an endless series of counter moves because each counter move is an evoked potential. Right. Each exactly. counter move. I see that. Every I, see that. To I guess I'm just survive. asking, how can you defeat that? Okay, well, let's talk about that. Well, since we've only got a few minutes left, let's talk about that. Okay. Okay, we just talked about one of the ways. You multitask and creates multiple threads. Okay, when, you, when you're multitasking, whatever it is you do, you enjoy doing, whether it's whistle while you work, singing in the shower, you know, watching television while you cook, uh, listening to music while you read a book, you know, that's multitasking, doing multiple things, at, thinking and doing multiple things at one time. Okay, they can't make sense of what they see on their screen because they're, they need single coherent patterns of thought in order to map out your brain. That's the way the technology is designed to work, to, to, to identify and develop single coherent patterns of thought. And okay, then integrate so that information. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me answer. Let, let me answer. Okay. So, so, so that's one. That's one method. And then another method is spontaneity. I haven't got there yet. I wanted to talk about this. Spontaneity absolutely defeats their technology. Spontaneity is not short-term planning. Spontaneity is speed of light, speed of thought decisions. You don't plan out your day. You just do it. So, for example, say you know the, you suddenly have the desire to go to the to the grocery store for peanut butter, okay? You're out of peanut butter, okay? Well, they, they just used, they used the, the previous memory reference of peanut butter, okay? And then they injected the desire for peanut butter, the, the memory reference of that desire. For, for example, um, you know, the previous, 
you, so you, they, 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 the supercomputer is monitoring you. Okay, they got cameras inside your house. Every time you, you go to the, to, to, the, to the kitchen for peanut butter, they know you like peanut butter, so they keep injecting the peanut butter back. Again, it doesn't matter to them, but whatever it is, you know, Coca-Cola, peanut butter, whatever, money, sex, whatever, okay? So in this case, they want you to go to the store to get the peanut butter. Why? Verification. To pitch you into an action or access sequence to verify their technology. So they're going to have people there in front of you and behind you at the store and in the peanut butter aisle. Okay, so say on the way to the store, you stop, you just meet, you pass the bank, and you immediately at that moment, you don't plan to go to the bank. You just pass the bank, and you immediately decide to turn into the bank. You just defeated their technology. How? Spontaneity. You broke the pattern they were seeking to develop. The pattern, the single coherent pattern they were seeking to develop, was pitching you into an action or access sequence regarding the specific stimuli. It does no good if you respond to random and chaotic occurrences. You must respond to their specific stimuli or their technology, or the verification process breaks apart. Same is true with, with, with spontaneity. Spontaneity disrupts the pattern that they're trying to establish. The, the, the pattern was you going to the store and getting the peanut butter, okay? But you were spontaneous. You stopped off at speed of thought at the bank. You didn't plan to do it. You just immediately did it as you were going. You just broke the pattern they were seeking to develop. You're being spontaneous. They know that, and you know that, okay? But it doesn't matter what they believe. What matters is the data, Okay, what matters is what they can, what, what the research and, and training and development is based off the data that they receive. So they've got to start all over again now. That's called spontaneity. So be spontaneous every chance you get in every way possible. Don't plan out your day. Just do it. Be spontaneous. And every time you're going somewhere and doing something, do something else. Just be spontaneous. You're, you're, what you're doing is you're constantly breaking patterns they're seeking to, to develop. Another way is, is, is quenching. Quenching is maintaining situational awareness of not just your surroundings, but your thoughts. It's, it's called reading active memory. What you do is you, you look for patterns. Uh, if, there, if, if you're constantly having compulsive and obsessive patterns about things, uh, thoughts about things, that's a pattern, okay? So you look for patterns, and then once you see patterns begin to develop, like for me it was this watch. I kept having these thoughts about this watch. That was a pattern, okay? So, I, you know, then you can begin to quench those thoughts. And then, of course, they're going to keep injecting, and the system's probing you for a response constantly, but that's called quenching. Then redirection. Redirection is another way. Uh, it's establishing a working reference. And when I say a working reference, I mean whatever it is in life that makes you happy, whatever, that, whatever person or event in life that makes you truly happy. With me, it's Jesus. He really makes me happy. Okay? But that's called your working reference. And then every time you're attacked, every time these remote neural attacks happen, that you have these artificial memory uh, uh, injections, impulse injections, et cetera, you just revert back to your working reference. So if you're not religious, if you're an atheist, it might be you know, your, your first love or the birth of a, you know, your firstborn child. Whatever it is in life that makes you, whatever person or event makes you most happy, that's called your working reference. That's how redirection works, redirecting away from their technology back to your original uh, memory and thought process. Okay, and then it just goes on and on. I mean, you, you're talking about uh, – there, there, there are many ways to defeat the technology. But, hello, can you hear me? I, yes. I do. I, I understand what you're saying, but this is a really specific – in the morning, I do something that helps protect me. And this is what I'm talking about. I understand the spontaneity thing, and maybe I can relate it to this circumstance. But let's just say I ask for help. Well, if I reword it – it throws them off for a few days. But I guess sometimes I have a habit of saying something in my head to set up protection around me or whatever. They make that feel bad. So I can reword it. It works for a while. But they they continue to make it feel bad down the line. Do you understand? The system, that, the system is adapting at speed of light. It's adapting right. to what you're doing. So there's no way out of this, this kind of. This well, yeah, there is there is a way out of it, and, then, and the name is Jesus. I mean, he does defeat this technology. Dr. Robert Duncan said that, and he's not even a Christian. Okay, you know, Jesus I'm not a Christian either, and I call on Jesus. That's one of the people I call on in the morning that makes me feel they're making me feel bad. <laughs> I well, believe in well, Jesus. Not, I mean, I'm no, not a Christian listen. or anything, but I do. I feel his energy, and I do call on him. But I'm not here to beat people over the head. That's one of the things I, that they try and make me feel bad. 
Well, I'm not so when, I people say it, for... when I call on this kind of help, they put me in pain. And then I okay. keep going anyway because I know in my brain that it's working. It's always worked. So I know that they're making me feel it isn't working. But the longer I pile through, they make it very hard. Hello? 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 Can you guys hear me? Yeah, what happened? I don't know. The whole I call got, got hung up on. Everybody got disconnected, including Brian. I got Brian. disconnected, too. I was the one that was talking. What happened? I don't know. The whole room shut down, except for the I chat. I thought so. I well, had right, to we about that. Isn't that crazy? Let me try and get a hold of Brian. That was crazy. Hold on I, one second. I, and, you know, I thought it was just me. Did you? Oh, it's Ella? So I'm wondering yeah, if Yeah, it's Ella. The back whole in. room just shut down. Everybody was gone. Been. All of a sudden, everybody was hung up on. Wow. Yeah, that was crazy. The whole room it was the hung up on. That's what happened to Neil's call on Sunday. I'm telling really? you, the talk show thing. Yep. Shoot, and I'm trying to reach him, and his phone's not being – hopefully he'll call back. Um, well, I had to call back about three or four times. I got a total blank when I called back. Yeah, I'm trying to reach him. And it's saying that it's not in service. It doesn't even make sense. Something happened to his call. I'm I'm amazed. I've never heard a total call disappear. I that just... was insane. I mean, I couldn't believe it was happening. I had like a full, you know, all of a sudden just hang up, hang up, hang up, hang up, all at once. I'm like, what is going on? Uh, I mean, and I've been disconnected, but I've never heard a whole room. The Sometimes whole room I felt like right like everybody just every nobody was there except for maybe three people. Really? I, so I feel I energy. Now and I can't like, be Brian. Everybody's Brian's gone. There's only these four people that are talking on this phone, I swear. 
the best I don't know. It was like 40, I don't know, 40 people or something. I'm trying to get back. And now Brian's phone won't work. I keep calling his phone, and it's not working. Uh, that is crazy. I hear it, not in service. Wow. What is going on with his phone? You think it's, it was the conversation? We were talking about God. I don't know. It's always, you know, you were saying that, you know. I don't I don't know. <laughs> Let me try to reach him again. I don't know what's going on with his phone. Do I have the right number? He's gonna, I hope he doesn't get all mad at me. Thank you. I don't have it. How can he get mad? He's probably trying to call you and not getting anywhere. I was afraid. Probably. But his phone's not working at all. That was crazy. Does anybody else want to be unmuted? Let me just unmute everybody. <laughs> That was great. That was so nuts, guys. I'm like, is my phone? Did my phone die? But what happens on my end, even if hypothetically if my phone did die, if you would still be on for another 10 minutes, and I have that opportunity to call back. Oh. Yeah. That was a very good call. I really I really enjoyed listening to him. I'm going to try a lot of things that he mentioned. I mean, it, it yeah, made sense. Oh, now, made sense. now my cell phone just died. Which oh, you're kidding. Well, that's crazy. I was sitting over here charging the whole night. I just went over to go grab it to get Brian's number. That's weird. Oh, wow. Away. Who knows? I mean, it shouldn't surprise us. It's just that I've never had that happen to that extent on a group call. That was insane. It was really busy, too. I was like, wow, there's still a lot of people on the call. I'm going to try and call Sue and get Sue to take over. Oh, Brian, I hope he doesn't think it was me. Doubt it. His, his phone's probably – did you get disconnected? Yeah, I did, too. Everybody did. Next so thing you know, you I, hear, I hear you guys talking, and the next thing you know, it's dead. So I walk over to the computer, or went sit down in front of the desk, and uh, everybody said, hang up, hang up, hang up. Just everybody was hung up on at once. Ah. Like 50 people or whatever it was. But he's called back but us? Um, let's see. There's still a lot of people um, that are here. Raise your hand if you'd like to join the conversation. We had like 10 people call back. They called back. Oh, it says no one, they can't hear us. They can't um, hear us? Hold on. Can you hear us? <laughs> I'm not on a computer. Can anyone hear them talking? Let's see if I can get. Let's see. I'm going to mute some people and they can talk. Virginia, are you there? Virginia? Hmm. I don't hear other people talking. Let's see here. Hear you. And then the, uh, another guy's on, right? Yeah. Corey's yeah. there. Corey, I got Corey. Yeah. Let's see. Really, I heard you three before I heard you. I guess if we can't get Brian, I'll probably log off. Yeah, I just want him to know that was such a good conversation. He was oh, the best guest I've ever heard. You know, he really. He really made, you know, sense, like some of the things that have happened to me. When Does he have a website? I, mean, just clicks. I don't know if he has a website, but that's not how I wanted to. Everybody's leaving the chat, but darn it. We'll, 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 we'll print in the chat that you're having trouble. Did you do that? Yeah, they know. Uh, but, but they said this, no, can't hear you, oh, but can I you hear email, you on the phone. Can you email Brian? Um, let me try. Yeah. I mean, it is almost time to hang up. It's like 10 minutes, but oh, I okay. really wanted to end the call. I just hope, let me stop the recording. Hold on. Stop in a minute. Oh, well, we got that was good. Back on. That was good. Yeah, it was really, really good. That's not how I was hoping to end it. Let me try and get Well, I'm it. sure we'll know what's going on. Yes, I'm getting some text messages here. It says you have to completely end your call. Schedule new end recording, terminate call. Okay. I'm getting some advice from some moderators. Oh, what do they say? Uh, just I have to end the whole call and open up the chat room again, but I think I'm going to oh. just go ahead and end it because um, it's almost 930 anyways. But that's not how I wanted to conclude the call. Let's see. Well, can you hold on just a second? I'm going to try and talk to Brian, try and get it back on real quick, okay? okay? Hold on one second.
Tori, were you the one that said that you you felt it was good? I thought it was amazing. I I assume. We, we don't hear. I I've heard him talk several times. And I've just, you know, but this is the first time I've heard him talk this long and answer questions and, and have, you know, the whole call like that. It was is this very, Patty? very, very good. Very good. Is your name Patty? No, I'm Barbara from Northern California. Oh, I miss California. You miss California? Trust me, you don't want to be in California right now. I was living in California for 17 years. Really? Where? Northern or Southern? Southern California. I'm sorry, Northern? Southern. Oh, okay, yeah. I don't know. I think there's a lot more going on here, and there's so much technology that I really do believe we're getting, we're majorly being experimented on. I mean, there's so much stuff that's being developed here. And I don't know, tons and tons of chemtrails, tons. Of chemtrails, I and I'm in I'm in Hillsburg, and it's pretty much unlivable with the technology and everything. I think the whole community I live in is being blasted. So I don't know if if I had a choice, I'd say California would be the last place I want to be right now as a target. All right. So according to Brian, he's in he was in Thailand, but he's still being targeted. I yeah, that's unbelievable. Because I had a friend that moved there, and he said nobody's even heard of electromagnetic sensitivity yet, even. Nobody nobody has it. It's so I guess... Satellite. Pardon? Self-satellite weaponry. Yeah. But he's saying that the Thai people themselves aren't complaining about this. And that was years ago I was in touch with him. Interesting. Where Where do you... What state are you in? I'm in Chicago. Oh, uh, and how is it in Chicago? It's all right and warm now, but it gets cold here. That's why I want to go back to the West Coast. Yeah. I, I, you know, there's something going on in the air, too, so much. Like, I know after the chemtrails, I can't even go out my door. It's better in my house than it is walking out the door. And when I step out the door, it's just so electrical and so awful. And even if I walk down the street, right. I can really relate it at, for, with the chemtrails, whatever they're dropping. And then they stop doing it during the day, and I can't sleep a lot at night. And I'm outside cooling off at 3 a.m., and I see chemtrails at night going across the moon. It's like they stopped doing it during the day, and now they're doing it at night. Wow. So nobody sees it. And I'll look out at a full moon, and I'll see, like, four straight white trails at 4 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> wow. I really do think the chemtrails are a, a piece of this, definitely. You know, they have something to do with the geoengineering and the more gallons yeah. of the... The air, doing, putting something in the air. Because when there aren't trails for maybe four or five days, the whole energy of the air feels different. Yeah. Well. It's sinister plans. A sinister government. Yeah. Yeah. Well, sometimes I just wonder, do I just quit? Because every time I find something that works, it doesn't work, then I find something else, and I'm like, am I, you know, I might as well just, not do anything else because it's got to be. I haven't found anything that works. What have you found that works? Uh, is Bella there? Barbara, Barbara are you? Um, she's checking you in and trying to see what she can do. Bob, are you anywhere near Bakersfield? I'm not. I'm in Northern California. I'm up um, about an hour and 50 minutes. You know anybody? I'm going to talk fast before it goes off. Are you there? Okay. There's a woman named Carla. Carla Grady is in Bakersfield. She's out of, out of a hospital, I think. Last night I was on a call. She needs help. She needs money. She's sitting in a horse so Bakersfield farm. Bakersfield is southeast California. Anybody, anybody who knows Bakersfield that could go help her. And I have a telephone number, and she needs us to send us some money. Not anywhere near there. You know anybody near there? No. Oh. Well, I mean, that's more close to, to Derek than it is Brian. No, Derek's way over in Hewitt and 
Yeah, yeah. Okay. he's in Southern California. Um, it's, 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 I'm in telephone number and she needs money. If anybody's in that maybe, area. Maybe, I don't know, the San Francisco people? I yeah, don't know. Wait a minute. Before we get cut off, we need to help her and we need to get her some money. We have got her telephone number. That's all. I don't know the woman that came in and told about it, but it was on. Uh, oh, whose call was that? I think it was you that announced it on one of the Saturday call or something. No, it was last night only. Eric's calling, yeah. But we need, I can, I don't know where, Derek doesn't live anywhere near her. It takes him three days to get to somebody, but she, I, I forgot the story what happened to her, but all they had, we had was a telephone number for a cell phone, and she needs money, and somebody gave her a, a place to sleep in a barn or something, and then I think I know who that is. It was the same one that used to live in Omaha. I know her, but I'm concerned about it, and we need to send her five or ten dollars a piece, and um, I don't know the woman that came in and told about it last night. What did she call her? Who was who lived around Bakersfield? Who was call was on last night? Um, Derek Monday. No, it was somebody else. Who else is on Monday? Oh, I don't know. I was on Derek's and I heard your announcement, but I was also on Saturday, so not my announcement. It was somebody else. I'm just repeating what I was told. And I don't know the person that came in on Derek's. It was Derek's call, I guess, if he was the only one. But I don't know how to get to her fast and get everybody to help her. We can't get her help if we keep talking. If somebody needs to get to Derek and see if we can get her some help fast, and we're going to get cut off any minute. So um, her name is Paul. I think you should call Derek. I don't have, I have no luck calling Derek, and I'm usually not able to get in touch with him. I leave messages a lot. I can't get on a computer, so that's not the way I can. So somebody, I was going to tell Ella before she went off, I don't know if she's coming back, but Brian was excellent tonight. He really was. Oh, you know, it was just, yeah, you know, sure makes sense. I mean, so I have no fear. I've written two challenges to listen, understand, and write at the same time. <laughs> we had a good telephone tonight. We could understand him. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's the first time I've heard somebody just let him go for that long. He's informative. And I have to admit, it clicks. Well, I had a friend in Nicaragua who wanted to rent a room in their home, and I was trying to get them together, so I don't know whether he's going back there or not. I'll try to find somebody see if he can get to him, but I don't know where he's going next. He might try Taiwan. That would might be a safe place. So he's going around everywhere trying to find somewhere to go? I hear there's nowhere to go. Well, I guess he has a reason for whatever he's doing. And now... I talked to, I don't know if you heard, you know, but I knew Justin Helmick, the one that committed suicide a few weeks ago. And he was telling me something he was thinking of doing, and it kind of made sense. I suppose if I was really, really desperate like he was, because he was losing time, and he was worried about what he was doing in that time, he was thinking of the five months just doing the same thing over and over and over and over and over again, a repetitive life, and then... Bit by bit, taking cash out, saving it. And you are talking. You the speaker. Whatever it is. She can't understand you. I want to hear hey, you. Hey, guys. Um, this is Ella. I couldn't get Brian back on the phone. And from what I understand, the call went too long. I had a five-hour call. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that makes sense. <laughs> I dread it. Again, a five-hour call is a long time. But, you know, I still have a full room. I don't know. And... Um, Sue is tired, and um, you have to figure out. Just to say, it really was about five, six, seven, eight, nine. Five hours is ten o'clock. Yeah, started at five, but, right? but I started at four. I actually opened the call up at four. Oh, I, my previous four. call used to be from four to six, and so I was I worried know. about people coming in at four. So yeah. I was like, okay, well, I'll open it up at four, and then just let people know to come back. You know, yeah, about five, six. Yeah, in the chat that you, you know, originally starting.
seen it for, and that's when the, they had timed it, and we went over our time. That's yeah, what we went five hours is a long call. But I just feel bad. Can I say something real quick before we get Three cut minutes. off? There's a girl named Carla Brady who needs help. She's in Bakersfield. If somebody is in Bakersfield or anywhere near, please get in touch with Derek and get in touch with her. She was sleeping in a barn last night. The announcement was on Derek's call by somebody. I don't know who made the call. They said we need to send them money. And I have a telephone number. That's all I know. Carla Brady needs help. Okay. Well, we'll have to look into it. I know that I have somebody I really care about, and she's good friends with her. So that's really concerning. We're going to have to look into that tomorrow. I have the telephone number. So I'm going to give you that. If I can give you the telephone number real quick. Okay, good. Yeah, please do, oh, Ella. Get it. Yeah. I noticed that Ella unfriended me on Facebook. What? No, I didn't. Oh, okay. No, my, listen, you got to, my, my, um, listen to what happened. Um, my, someone hijacked my TI account. I have my personal mm -hmm. account. I can't mm -hmm. even log into my, um, I can't even log into my uh, account, so I don't know how that's possible. I don't know if someone has taken it over, but I can't log in. And they say they want my ID and all this stuff, and I can't even get the ID information in there. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So, no, I did not personally do that. Oh. <laughs> I'm so sorry that you thought that. No, I did not unfriend anybody. No, I didn't. I can't even get in on it because I really would like to have my Facebook account because what better way to announce your call, right? I can't even do it. I have to call Shelly and people and have them promote it for me or send emails. Um, you know, I don't have a lot. I don't have a very extensive list, but, no, I would never unfriend you. Uh, can I give you the telephone number real quick before we get sure. that off? Go ahead. Okay. Six one. What is it? I'm sorry. I didn't hear you, Virginia. Six one. Three. Seven. Six. Four. Two. Eight. Oh. So what's the, what was the area code, though? I didn't catch it. 661. Six, six, Bakersfield. 376. Okay, so 661. Six, six, Carla Brady. I know who and she is, too. 661. 376. 4280. Oh, and I'm yeah. going to okay. 89. 4289. Oh, okay. And I don't know who gave the announcement. Okay. Now uh, you got somebody who knows it, though. That's good. Who was talking that said they thought I unfriended them? I don't Where'd know. Where'd she go? I guess she's not there. Well, I think I'm going to try and go to bed. Okay, so sleep well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, sorry about the abrupt ending, guys. It just went over too long. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm glad that's, that's what happened anyway. Yeah, me too. I thought it was something nefarious, like they didn't want to I know, to I know, I know. I thought they disconnected us, but I like hearing that instead. Yeah, okay. it was just something natural. It was five hours. I guess that was it. Um, yeah, so that's what happened. Well, thank you for the call. Okay, and then it'll be back. Like I said, I don't have my Facebook anymore, so I cannot announce the call, so I can't give you any information. So I'm trying to figure out a way around it. I'm gonna maybe you know, I can't get on the computer anyway, so you're preaching to Yeah, I know you can't, just other people. It would be nice to be able to uh, um, to be able to do that. Um, but, yeah, right. I'm going to work on well, trying to get that. Well, you can always have Derek announce it Monday night. Yep, maybe I'll do that. Yeah, yeah. I'll have Derek do that because that's about the only way I can do it, you know. He put uh, it in the newsletter. It's on the newsletter. He did okay. put it in the newsletter. Yeah, he did do that. It's got at the wrong hours. It's got the four to six, my original time. So announced it at those hours as well. He announced. What is your time now? Um, now it's like five to nine. Eastern or Western? Um, five to nine Pacific. So that's Western. So it's going to be help me. My brain's so tired. Eight to you know midnight, I guess. All right, six, seven, eight, eight. Okay. Oh. Okay. Okay, thanks, guys. I'm going to end the call. Um, Sue is not going to be continuing the call tonight. She's had a long day as well. Um, sorry about that, guys. It just was five hours, and that's what happened. Right. And, and um, I'm sorry you can't get a hold of me. My phone is busy, but that's everybody's saying it. So, yeah, um, I figured it was that because you had told me when we had that great conversation, you had told me. Yeah. You know, um, that you were having everybody's phone. telling me my phone is busy. I'm not even getting any hardly any voice messages. I'll go days with no messages. Right. right. So that's, I'm just, 
Okay, guys. Well, have a nice evening. Hey, have Perhaps. a good night. Thanks again. So 6 o'clock Thursday. It's not going to be 5. I, I think it's going to be oh, well, it's you gonna can be come six. in at 5. Fine. 5 oh, or 6. six well, I'm just worried nine. about it shutting off again. I have to figure that out. Just try 5 o'clock. <laughs> audio. Try 5 o'clock Thursday, and we'll just take it, you know, from there, you know. Okay. Uh, thanks, guys. Have a good evening. Thank you. Well, bye. Bye-bye. Thank you for the call. It was wonderful.